Today, I've made a compilation of all of my favorite 100 day videos that I have spent on the Smash MC server. So make sure you sit back, relax, and enjoy a compilation of all of my favorite 100 day videos. And just before we jump into the video, I am currently in a race with Nintendo to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of 2024. Make sure to hit that sub button. It takes two seconds and I promise you won't regret it. In this video, I'm going to be spending 100 days in fighting type only Pixelmon. So of course I loaded in and only had two choices for my starters. That of course would be Torchic and Chimchar. My rival Hawk decided that he wanted to take the Chimchar, so of course I decided to take the Torchic. Blaziken is one of my favorite fighting type starters, so I'm super excited to use this guy in this 100 days. Me and Hawk then decided to have a little battle where I ended up defeating Hawk pretty easily with over half of my HP still on my Torchic. I then opened up a bunch of random Pokemon papers, where I ended up getting myself a Mian Shao, which of course is a fighting type Pokemon, meaning I'd be able to use it. I then checked out the IVs of both my Pokemon, with my Mian Shao having only 37% IVs, and my Torchic having 94% IVs, which was crazy. I then headed over to the fusion area, where I found a fighting type fusion between Blaziken and Tapu Koko, called Blazer Coco. And you guys already know I have to get this fusion Pokemon to fuse with my starter. I then headed over to the level grinder where I ended up evolving my Torchic up into a Combusken and my Combusken into a shiny Blaziken. And although the shiny doesn't look that good, it was still a Blaziken nonetheless. So I was super happy with this guy. I then decided to head out into the wild to try and find my third fighting type Pokemon. So I RTP'd out into a forest biome. Now, there was a massive lake around me, which was perfect for the Pokemon I wanted to catch. But eventually, I finally found the Pokemon I wanted, and that, of course, was a Poliwag. Now that I had the Poliwag, I decided it would be a great idea to head back over to the boss tower to grind a little bit of money and level up my Pokemon at the same time, where I ended up fighting things like this boss Drapion, which was super difficult, and Pokemon like this super powerful Chesnort. It was such a high level compared to the rest of my Pokemon, so it was difficult for me to take down half these bosses. But eventually, after taking down a couple bosses, I finally evolved my Poliwag into a Poliwhirl. Then from Poliwhirl up into a Poliwrath. Obviously, I could have evolved it into a Politoed, but that wouldn't be a fighting type. So Poliwrath was my only option here. And the way he puffs out his chest is such a cool animation. I love this guy. Now, I decided to head back out and RTP into a Dark Oak Forest. Now, the reason for this was because I wanted to catch myself a Shroomish. Now, to find this Shroomish, I needed it to be nighttime, and it was a pretty uncommon spawn. So, I had to wait around a little while until eventually it finally spawned on me. I then continued looking around in this extreme hills biome, where I ended up finding myself a Metatite, which of course evolves into a Metacham. And that is exactly what I found next. A Mega Boss Metacham of legendary level. And I kid you not, this thing was so difficult to defeat. At level 97, when my highest Pokemon's are 57, there was no way I was defeating this thing. So I got completely destroyed and my entire team was defeated in one hit by this insane Medicham boss. I then waited till daytime where I ended up having a Machoke spawn. Of course, Machamp, the iconic Generation 1 fighting type Pokemon. This guy is awesome and I had to catch him. After heading into Ultra Space, there were a bunch of Raid Dents for me to defeat. So I defeated a bunch of them and got a bunch of really good loot. Most importantly though, the XP candies, which I'd be able to use to evolve my Pokemon. Now I continued exploring around and I could not believe it. I had a Feromosa spawn on me, which of course is an Ultra Beast Pokemon. So of course I ended up catching the Feromosa as it is a bug fighting type Pokemon meaning I'd be able to add it to my team. I then got a bit bored of Ultra Space, so I headed home and used the level grinder with my new high-level Feromosa to get a bunch of XP for my team. And with all the leveling, my Shroomish evolved into a Breloom. I then headed to this giant hill where Hawk wanted to build a base, and it was a Toxicroak that spawned. So I stole it from behind him, thinking I was hilarious, but it turns out that he also has a Toxicroak. So I didn't really do anything. I then had a great lucky block. So I said to Hawk, why don't we use this great lucky block to see who wins in a rival battle? So the winner would get the lucky block to open for themselves. Me and Hawk then entered the battle, but unfortunately after a pretty hard battle, 
Hawk ended up defeating me and getting the lucky block for himself. So we decided to build a little house on top of this mountain. I accidentally fell off the mountain and I could not believe my eyes. When I was about to swim back up, I heard a polywag. And what do you know, it had sparkles. It was a shiny polywag, meaning I'd be able to get myself a shiny polyraph, which was awesome. Eventually though, I had finally completed our fighting dojo house. I was super happy with how it looked with a little lake outside, a bunch of greenery, a bunch of trees, some bamboo. And then after you enter the house, we had some punching bags, a little sofa, and Hawk had made these hilarious little triple monitor gaming setups. If you want to check out the full tour, make sure to go check out his video as he shows the entire thing off and has a funny voiceover for it too. After all the messing about, I then decided to take my Feromosa and level up my entire team in the level area. I eventually had my Poliwag evolve into a Poliwell, and then I continued leveling as much as possible to get my team to the highest level, which of course is level 100. Now that I had a full team of level 100s, I created a Never portal and headed into the Never, as there was a certain legendary Pokemon that I wanted to catch. So I started digging out a massive area in the Never until I had a Mega Houndoom boss spawn on me. Once again, this was going to be a difficult challenge, but luckily I had a level 100 team and I managed to defeat the boss Houndoom, getting me some awesome rewards, including a Mega Stone and a Keystone so I'd be able to Mega Revolve more Pokemon, but more importantly, a Master Ball, which was huge, especially for the Pokemon that I wanted to catch next. I then witnessed Hawk murdering a shiny Ghastly, which was madness. A Gengar is a shiny, especially if it megged would have been so cool. Although it wasn't a fighting type, so I can sort of understand why he murdered it. But then we finally had it after days of waiting on a platform, the Marshadow spawn. I used a Master Ball that I'd gotten from my Mega Boss Houndoom and caught myself a Marshadow. My team was starting to look very good. I was then just running around my base, just doing random stuff. Me and Hawk were a little bit bored. And then I came across two Jangamo's. And when they evolve, they become a very, very strong dragon fighting type in comma O. So I obviously had to catch myself both of these to see which one was better. I then AFK'd for a little bit longer, where I ended up having a Ryolu spawn on me. And if you guys are a big fan of the channel, you'll know that my favorite Pokemon, of course, is Lucario. I then took both my new Pokemon and headed over to the level grinder, where I ended up evolving my Jangamo all the way up to a Hakamo, and then a Hakamo into a Komo. -O. And I might be completely butchering those names, and I apologize if I am. I then headed over to the fusion chamber and checked out all of the different possible fighting type fusions that I could make. But there was also an Urshifu Rayquaza, which is called Rayshifu, which looked so cool. But I didn't think I'd be able to get myself both an Urshifu and a Rayquaza. And of course, like I said before, I was thinking about creating the Blazer Coco fusion. Me and Hawk then built one fighting type team each, headed over to the move relearner and made our teams as strong as possible, giving them the best possible moves. The reason for this is because we wanted to enter the war zone. War zone is basically an area where a load of high level Pokemon spawn. And there's a super high chance that a legendary Pokemon will spawn too. But the only catch here is if you end up getting into a battle with another player, if you lose that battle, they are able to steal one of your Pokemon, which is devastating. So you've got to be very careful when heading in here. Whilst in the war zone, Hawk engaged in a battle with another player. He instantly told me that I had to hurry over to him. And I was so confused on why, but then I realized it was because a Necrozma had spawned on him. Which of course isn't actually a fighting type Pokemon, but I knew I had to head over there and catch it for myself just to stop any other players from catching it. After me and Hawk both got out of the war zone, we then decided to have a rival battle. Now with this rival battle, we had another lucky block on the line. This time it was an ultra ball lucky block, so it would spawn a legendary Pokemon. So I knew I had to try and win this one, because if I was able to get a fighting type legendary, my team would be unstoppable against Hawk. Luckily though, I managed to prevail and beat him in the battle, meaning I won an ultra ball lucky block. Now it's time to open this bad boy and see what we get. And I could not believe it. It upgraded to a master ball lucky block. I could not believe my luck. But it was time to open it, and we got ourselves a shiny Ho-Oh. Unfortunately, though, the shiny Ho-Oh is not a Pokemon that we can use because, of course, it's not a fighting type. 
but it's still pretty cool anyway. Now, after catching the shiny ho, I wanted to show it off to Hawk, but he was not having any of it. He was so mad that I beat him. Me and Hawk then had a little discussion, and we decided to do a little challenge for a fusion key. Because we both wanted to make a fusion on the server with one of our fighting type Pokemon, so we decided to make it into a little game. Basically, the rules of the game are... We have a certain amount of time to catch as many fighting type Pokemon as we possibly can. And whoever catches the most Pokemon wins a challenge and wins themselves a fusion key. So of course, it was time to head out and find as many fighting type Pokemon as possible. Luckily, we lived around an extreme hills biome, meaning it was home to so many fighting type Pokemon. For example, like this Hitmonchan, we have Hitmonlee, Machop, Makuhita, Mienfu. There's so many different fighting type Pokemon. We didn't count duplications though. So for example, if you'd already caught yourself a Machop, you couldn't then go and catch yourself a Machoke and count it as two different Pokemon. That would still only count as one. So I caught up all the Pokemon I could possibly find. And by the time we made it back, we both placed down a sign and then did a countdown and showed how many Pokemon we had caught. Hawk had caught four and I had caught six. So I was the winner and got myself a Fusion Key meaning I'd be able to create the fusion that I wanted in Blazer Coco. But of course, I didn't actually have the Blazer Coco yet because I needed to get a Tapu Coco. So I RTP'd into loads of different biomes and ended up defeating Raid Dens on my way to find a jungle biome, which is where Tapu Coco spawns. I defeated this Grotto Raid Den, which gave me some pretty good XP candies to level up my team, and this Electrode Raid Den, which gave me a wishing piece and more rare candies, meaning if I found another Raid Den, I'd be able to do more Raid Den battles. Eventually, though, I finally came across a jungle biome. I searched for days looking for this Tapu Koko, but I luckily did find something else in place of that, and that was a Mega Boss Sceptile. Obviously, this Pokemon as a Mega is a Grass Dragon type, which isn't the fighting type that we would need, but it's still cool to take on a defeat. Eventually, after a long time of exploring, the Tapu Koko finally spawned on me, and I ended up catching it. Now, there was only one more thing to do, and that was to take my Blaziken and my Tapu Koko over to the fusion machine, add in the fusion key, and create Blazer Coco. Now, he was such a cool Pixelmon fusion, and I was so happy to have him on my team. There was no chance that Hawk was going to defeat me now. I then headed back to my base, waiting for Hawk to come back on, and then a Mega Boss Lucario spawned. Now, this is amazing, because I already have my Lucario, and I have a Mega Ring, because I defeated the Mega Bosses previously, Meaning all I had to do now was defeat this mega boss, get myself a Lucario Knight, and then I'd be able to mega evolve my Lucario, giving my team an even more power boost to take on Hawk in our next rival battle. So I mega evolved my Lucario and he looked amazing. I'm so happy that I finally got my favorite Pokemon as a mega. I then headed over to the EV trainer as I wanted to EV train all of my Pokemon to make them as strong as possible. After I perfectly trained them all in their EVs, I headed back to the level grinder to continue leveling my entire team up to level 100. And you might be wondering, I've already done this, so why am I leveling them again? Well, I'm leveling a different team to level 100 as I want to go back into the war zone soon, but I don't want to risk using my super amazing fighting type team just yet. There's also a feature on the server called the battle pass. Now with this, the longer you play and the more that you do, you'll unlock more stages on the battle pass. Now I didn't know about this until now, so I headed on there and claimed all of the stuff I possibly could, getting me a common lucky block and an uncommon lucky block. And when I went out to use them, a shiny and Mienfu spawned, which was mad because that is a fighting type, which means I'm going to be able to catch it and have a shiny Pokemon on my team. I then decided to open up my lucky blocks, where I ended up getting his fighting type for Simeon, which I probably wouldn't use, but it's still another fighting type Pokemon to add to the team. And also opening the Great Ball Lucky Block, I got a shiny Cofagrigus, which unfortunately isn't a fighting type, it is a ghost type, but it's still pretty cool to have. By the time I'd done all of this, Hawk was now back online and ready for our rival battle. So we headed into the battle, and of course, with these rival battles, there is a Lucky Block on the line. Now, of course, last time it was an Ultra Ball Lucky Block, so this time, we have put on the line a Master Ball Lucky Block. I thought I had this in the bag, you know, with my Mega Lucario, my Feromosa, my Marshadow. I didn't bring my fusion Pokemon to this battle because I didn't think it was quite fair yet. And I wanted Hawk to have a fusion as well so that when we had our last battle, it would be a little bit more fair. Hawk ended up beating me. I underestimated his team by so much. I didn't think that he'd have such a powerful team, but he did so Hawk opened up the Master Ball Lucky Block and got himself a shiny Latias, 
which is awesome to see. But luckily for me, he can't use it because it's not a fighting type. So I don't have to worry about that in our next rival battle. After Hawk caught his shiny legendary, I sat him down on the sofa and I showed off my shiny Mianfu. We decided that what we would do is have another challenge race. The first person that was able to find a shiny Pokemon and bring it back to the house would win any Pokemon they want. So we rushed over to the war zone to try and find a shiny Pokemon as the odds are increased in there. Unfortunately, though, the only thing I ended up finding was a legendary Spectria. I continued exploring as much as possible, trying to find this shiny Pokemon, where I ended up defeating a Mega Kangaskhan boss and a Mega Steelix boss. Gave me some pretty good loot and some Mega Stones. I then also came across this amazing five-star raid then for the Zoroark. I did not think I was going to defeat it. But luckily, with the help of my Mega Lucario, I was able to prevail and defeat the raid. But after I completed it, there was no time to wait as I noticed a shiny Pokemon in the corner of my screen. And that, of course, was a shiny Score Bunny. So I quickly caught it as fast as I could and then headed back to base. And after opening the door, I didn't see Hawk anywhere. So I thought that I had won. But when I turned around, he jumped off the ceiling as he was hiding up there from me because he had already caught a shiny Shelda, meaning that he had won the challenge. I was devastated. I could not believe it. I for sure thought that I had won this, but he'd won and he'd now gotten his legendary of his pick. Now, of course, he was going to pick himself a fighting type legendary and the Pokemon he decided to pick was a Galarian Zapdos, which is an absolute powerhouse. I was so jealous of this Pokemon. But I was also happy for him because he would need it against my fusion Pokemon and my Ultra Beast. So we'll see what happens in our next fight. Now to prepare for this next fight, I need to get a bunch of held items on my Pokemon. So I headed over to the boss tower and defeated as many boss Pokemon as I possibly could. Because the more I defeat them, the more money I get and the more boss drops I get. So if I don't get the held item I need straight away, I can just buy it afterwards. Eventually, I'd gotten all of the held items I needed, including toxic orbs, life orbs, and even leftovers. Now we entered in, and I was sure that I was going to win. I'd brought my fusion with me this time, so I was very confident on this win. And of course, like the other rival battles, we had a lucky block on the line. Now, I won't spoil what lucky block this is, but if you can guess which lucky block we're about to open, make sure to put it in the comments and don't cheat. And don't be cheating because you'll see it very soon. After we finally finished the battle, I ended up defeating Hawk with only my Breloom left. The legendary Breloom. I was so happy that he survived this, meaning I would get to open this lucky block. Now, if you guys did guess the correct lucky block, it of course was the God lucky block, which spawns three legendary Pokemon that can be either fusions, legendaries, or even custom textured legendaries. So I was ready to open up the God Lucky Block. Here we go. Come on. And I managed to get some awesome Pokemon, including a Landorus, a Galaxy Tapu Lele, and a Shadow Arceus. As you can see in the chat, everyone just exploded. They were all like, please let me TP. We need to see this. God Lucky Blocks don't get opened often, and this was awesome to see. I then felt really bad for Hawk after catching my Pokemon, so I decided to let him catch the Landorus, but his balls just went straight through the Landorus, because with the Lucky Blocks, only the person that opens them can actually catch them, which is an awesome feature, meaning that no one will ever steal your Pokemon. But I did find it quite funny, because he really wanted to steal that Landorus from me. I then decided to head over to the gyms, where I ended up taking them out pretty quickly, as I have an awesome team now that are full of super strong Pokemon. So I defeated the Electric Gym with no issues, then I took on the Dragon Gym, and also managed to to take that one down pretty quickly after defeating the dragon type gym leader i was pretty happy with my team and with how i was performing so i decided to continue and take on the dark gym which i ended up defeating as well the only problem was when i came up against the ground gym i had a lot of issues with that gym and got defeated so i took a little break and when i came back to the base hog showed me that he managed to catch an urshifu which i was super jealous of he now had two fighting type legendary pokemon so I said to Hawk, how about we search and try and find me a Kubfu and make it an Urshifu as well? And he was happy to do so. So we headed out on a journey and ended up finding a bamboo forest. Now, if you guys know much about Pixelmon spawns, you'll know that you need to clear out a massive flat area for them to have the best chances of spawning. So we destroyed all of the bamboo that we possibly could until eventually I finally had the Kubfu spawn on me, getting me my legendary fighting type Pokemon. Now, when we got back to base, we realized, obviously, that I would have to evolve mine to an Urshifu. But since Hawk had the water type one, 
I decided to go for the dark type Urshifu so that I'd be able to rival him somewhat. We came up with a plan to fly around on both of our legendaries to try and find an Urshifu tower. And after a long time of traveling, we came across the correct Urshifu tower. We came across the dark type Urshifu tower, which of course is the one that we were looking for. So I headed up to the flag at the top of the building and threw out my Kubfu, who evolved into an Urshifu. I decided to grab out both my Score Bunny and my Urshifu and head over to the level grinder to level them up to level 100. Now, I decided because I already had a Cinderace and now I've got an Urshifu, I wanted to use both of them. So I headed over to the fusion machine and decided I wanted to fuse them both together. Coincidentally though, Hawk was already there. So I had to watch him create the exact same fusion that I was about to make. But we both sat there while we created both of our fusion Pokemon, which of course is Cindershifu. Such a cool Pokemon. Luckily for me though, I now had two fusion fighting type Pokemon on my team. So I figured for sure I was going to win our next rival fight. But... I need to learn not to underestimate Hawk. I did get defeated by taking his team for granted. We headed back to the home and jumped on top of two of the tallest trees we could find and headed into our rival battle. Like I said before, I was so confident that I was going to win this with my Mega, my two Fusion Pokemons, my Ultra Beast, my Legendary Marshadow. I thought that I had this fight in the bag, but unfortunately I ended up losing to a glitch, which I was devastated about. But it is what it is. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. GG's, Hawk. Today, I'm going to be spending 100 days revisiting one of my biggest videos ever, which of course was 100 days with dragon type only Pokemon. Now, before I jump into the video, of course, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel because if we manage to hit 28,000 subscribers, I'm going to start creating 500 days in Fusion Pixelmon. Now, I know you guys want to see it because everyone has been asking for it. And without further ado, let's jump into 100 days with Dragon type only Pokemon. On day one, of course, I loaded into the server and had to pick up my starter Pokemon. Now, on the server, there are some custom starters, which meant that I'd be able to get a Dragon type straight off the bat. So, of course, I ended up picking my boy, Dreepy. And before I even had a chance to load into the server, I instantly had my rival Hawk try to battle me, in which he had a bag on which absolutely destroyed my Dreepy. Hawk has also uploaded his perspective of this video, so if you want to check it out, links will be down in the description. Now on the server, there is a free shiny claim that you can get if you link your Discord account to the server's Discord. So I did that, but unfortunately, I only ended up getting myself a shiny Ido duo, which is definitely not a dragon type. So we continued on and I decided to beat Hawk in my next rival battle. I'm going to need to make my Dreepy as powerful as possible. So I headed over to the EV grinder, gave him the power bracer to up his attack EVs, and then I went in to grind the attack EVs as much as I possibly could. And after I'd finally got myself perfect EVs on my Dreepy, I headed into the level grinder to try and level up my Dreepy as much as possible. But... Even the first level, which is just Raticate, was a struggle for my Dreepy. So we had to downgrade and head over to the level 10 Rotatas just to try and get a few levels on this guy. Now, of course, I'm not going to spend the whole time leveling up my Pokemon in the level grinder. It seems a little bit cheap. So I decided to head out and do a little bit of exploring where I ended up coming across a Raid Den which had a Grovile, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch it because as you guys spammed me in the last video, when you Mega Revolve a Sceptile, it does actually become a Dragon type. So it would have been something I could have used. And whilst exploring around in the Ultra Space biome, I ended up coming across a Gibble, which of course evolves into one of the strongest Dragon type Pokemon being a Garchomp. And whilst on my exploration, I ended up coming across a Beast Ball loot. Now, these have a chance of dropping Arceus plates, which I was lucky enough to get myself a Draco plate. But luckily for me, there was a player under the name of Ite, and he really needed that Draco plate. So I decided to trade it to him for a custom Paradox Form Dragapult, which is a Dragon type, which is called Depth Fear. Now that we had this super powerful Dragon type, I was super confident that I'd be able to defeat Hawk in our next rival fight. And the last thing I ended up doing whilst I was in Ultra Space was come across a Ultra Beast Feromosa. 
Now, of course, we had to go ahead and catch this thing, but it is not actually a dragon type, meaning we weren't able to use it. So after exploring around for a little bit longer, I decided to head out of Ultra Space as I wasn't really finding any dragon types that I would need. But there was a certain one that I really wanted to find that ended up being in a forest biome which was the little tiny apple Pokemon, which evolves into a Flapple or an Appleton. Now, luckily for us, when we caught this Applin, it had a sweet apple on it, meaning we were able to evolve it straight away up into the grass and dragon type Appleton. I then headed back into Ultra Space because in Ultra Space, there are a bunch of raid dens. And I figured maybe there'd be a chance that I'd be able to catch even more dragon type Pokemon just by defeating them in the easy raid dens. I ended up coming across a Drapion, which had some pretty good loot for me. And then I came across a Flapple, which is the other version of the Applin that I didn't end up evolving. So if I was able to defeat this and catch it, I would have both Flapple and Appleton to add to my team. So we ended up defeating it. But then when I went to catch it, I threw an Ultra Ball at this thing. But unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough. And I ended up losing the Flapple on the final roll. But on the bright side, there was a bit of silver lining here. As a naturally spawning Hydreigon actually appeared above me. Which we, of course, ended up catching. I then continued through and defeated a few more raid dens. Until eventually I came across an Extreme Hills biome. Where I caught myself a Jangmo. I then headed onto the GTS where I ended up seeing a lucky block on there. So, of course, you guys already know I love opening these lucky blocks, so I had to buy it just in case I managed to get myself a dragon type because you never know with these things. So, I bought the lucky block, opened it, and I actually managed to get an upgrade to an uncommon lucky block. I was feeling pretty confident now, especially since this thing was now a shiny guaranteed. So, I opened it up and got myself a rare lucky block, which is a guaranteed legendary Pokemon. And finally, when I went to open it again, it upgraded to the final form, a Master Ball Lucky Block, which is a guaranteed shiny legendary Pokemon, which is crazy. From a common Lucky Block all the way up to a Master Ball. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Ye oh. Yeah. Yay. Uh. <sighs> Yay. A shiny Entei. A shiny Entei. Obviously, Shiny Entei is not a dragon type, so we just swiftly moved on from that. I then encountered myself a Frigibax, which is a new Generation 9 dragon type Pokemon, which of course evolves into the Ice and Dragon type Pokemon Baxcalibur, which is a super strong dragon type. And after I caught that, it was time to head back into the level grinder to evolve all of my Pokemon up to their final evolutions. Eventually, I finally had my entire team up to their final evolutions. I didn't quite get them to level 100 yet, just because if we're having rival battles every now and then, there wasn't really much point in leveling them up to level 100 because we're just going to force set the levels anyway. We then came across this little area that had a little campsite in a dragon looking area on an extreme hills biome. So we set up home and then headed back to the spawn to complete the little event that was happening, which of course was to collect all 25 of the treasure chests. Now with this, you get a bunch of rewards, including a bunch of random Pokemon papers, which we ended up claiming. And I ended up getting myself a Charmeleon and a Dratini. Now this is good because Charmeleon can Mega Evolve into Charizard X, making it a Fire Dragon type. And of course, Dratini evolves into Dragonite, which is a pseudo legendary Dragon type from Generation 1. I then used my final paper, which is a specific Pokemon paper, which I ended up redeeming a Gudra with. Me and Hawk then had a bunch of lucky blocks to claim, so we ended up opening them all up, but unfortunately, I didn't end up getting myself any Dragon-type Pokemon, so these lucky blocks were unfortunately very useless for me. But for Hawk, he ended up getting an upgrade to a legendary lucky block, meaning he was guaranteed to get at least a legendary Pokemon, which could have been a dragon type, could not be one. But of course, knowing Hawk's luck, he got himself a Giratina, which of course is a dragon type, which was not good for me. I can't lie. He now had a Giratina, a legendary Pokemon, which I did not have. So I was very, very scared. And as a reward for getting the best lucky blocks out of our little challenge that we had going on there, I gave him a fusion key so that eventually he'd be able to make himself a dragon type fusion Pokemon. And before we get into our rival battle, I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe for more of these type only videos. And of course, let us know in the comment section what type you want to see next. But without further ado, let's jump into the battle with Hawk. And into the battle, I end up starting with Hydreigon and Hawk started with his Dracovish. I managed to take down quite a few of his Pokemon before Hydreigon went down. 
but Salamance was just fast enough to take down my Hydreigon in one hit. Now, the difference with these rival battles, though, is the fact that obviously Dragon type Pokemon are super strong, but not only that, they're one of the only types that are super effective on themselves. So, when it came to this rival battle, it ended quite quickly with my Depthfizz sweeping most of his team, and as a reward, I got five common lucky blocks. Unfortunately, though, I didn't end up getting anything that good. I got myself a Zwilos and also a Skrelp, meaning I'd be able to get a Dragalge, but I already have a Hydreigon, so not the best rewards, unfortunately. I then went snooping over to the fusion machine to see what Hawk was up to, and to my surprise, he'd found a Pokemon to fuse with Giratina. He grabbed himself a Tyranitar, put in the Giratina, and he created a Gyranitar. The Giratina and Tyranitar fusion, which looked so powerful, I was so scared for the next rival battle. And with this new knowledge, I knew I would have to upgrade my team and make it as strong as possible. So I started off by catching my next Dragon-type Pokemon, which of course was Trapinch, and an Axew as well. I then also managed to come across a Mega Garchomp boss, which was going to be huge because if I managed to defeat it, I'd get a Garchomp pipe, which I could use to Mega Revolve my Garchomp, giving me the edge over our next rival fight. I then used some of my rewards that I got, like my Rare Candies and my EXP Candies, to evolve my Dratini into a Dragonair, and then all the way up into a Dragonite. Now that I had a pretty strong team, I figured it would be time to head over to the gyms. Unfortunately, though, some of my Pokemon weren't allowed in the gym, like the Dragapult and the Depth Fear, which is Paradox Dragapult. So I had to replace some of my members with other Dragon types. But nonetheless, I had a super strong team and I managed to defeat so many of the gym leaders, including the Electric Gym, which is pretty easy for my Ground and Dragon type Pokemon. I then took on the Rock Gym, which I ended up taking out pretty quickly too. The Grass Gym, which was a piece of cake. But then it came down to the Steel Gym, which unfortunately I was not prepared for and I ended up getting defeated. And knowing I can't take out a gym like the Steel Gym, I knew I would have to do a lot more training. So I headed over to the Boss Tower to try and get myself a bunch of rewards. And hopefully I'll be able to get some items that I'd be able to use later in our next couple rival fights. And after making it back to my house, I realized that the base was looking kind of ugly. So we ended up doing a bit of maintenance work replacing all the stone with grass, adding a waterfall, adding trees, just to give this place a little bit of life. But during this time, I ended up having an event start. This event was a random tournament, where every player that joined would get a random team of six Pokemon, and we had to fight it out. And I just want to say, my team was pretty strong. I had a Solrock, an Eternatus, a Primarina, a Ferramosa, an Odino, and a Pinsa. Now, I was very, very confident with this team. It was super intense. And of course, the other player on the other side of the final was my rival, Real Hawk. After a pretty difficult and sweaty battle, which I'm not going to show you because it was, it took a while. I ended up taking the dub over Hawk getting my win in our first ever tournament. I managed to get some crates too, which ended up being a Mega Stone crate. Now with this, I got myself an Amphrosite, which is amazing because I also had a specific Pokemon paper, which I was able to use to claim Amphros. And if anyone knows about Mega Amphros, when it evolves into a Mega, it becomes a Electric Dragon type meaning I'd actually be able to use this on my dragon type team. And for winning the tournament as well, before we started it, me and Hawk decided that what we would do is whoever won the tournament or whoever got further out of the both of us would end up getting a fusion key. Now, because I ended up winning, I got myself a fusion key, which I decided to use to fuse my starter Dragapult with a Greninja, getting me Dragoninja, one of the strongest fusion Pokemon on the server. And now with my new team, I was not afraid of Hawk. I knew that I would destroy him no matter what because Dragon Injury and Depth Fear are so OP. So I headed back over to the level grinder, leveled up my team a little bit more, then headed home and acclaimed another lucky block. Now with this, I managed to get an upgrade to a legendary Pokemon, but unfortunately, again, it was only a Landorus, which is not a dragon type Pokemon which is another legendary now that I've had to catch and not be able to use. This is killing me. We had big plans for our base, so I bought a bunch of concrete and decided to start building the battle arena, ready for our next rival battle. Now, my idea for this was just to make a giant Pokeball, have an area on one side, an area on another side, and have both players stand on those podiums and then have a battle. And I'll be honest, it, was, it came out pretty well. I'm quite happy with how the arena looked. It's going to get spruced up a little bit more later on, don't worry about that but for now i'm pretty proud of my building skills here all right guys like come on 
I then got my last preparations done before our next rival battle, getting my Pokemon leveled up a little bit more just to get Dragon Ninja to level 100, as a fusion Pokemon on the server get their signature move at level 100. And I needed to have that before the next rival fight, because Dragon Ninja's signature move is Draconic Kunai, which is like a really powerful dragon type version of a water shuriken, so I could not pass up on that. I then spent a little bit more time on the move relearners, getting my Pokemon the best possible moves that I could, and then it was time to head into our next rival fight. I started out with my Mega Ampharos and Hawk started out with his fusion Pokemon between Giratina and Tyranitar. And the battle was pretty close. I don't want to say that I was over prepared for the fight. And luckily for me, it got very, very close. But Dragon Ninja was my final Pokemon left alive. And I ended up taking the dub once again. Now for this one, the reward was two uncommon lucky blocks, which I decided I felt really bad for Hawk, so I gave him one of the lucky blocks, but we only got a shiny Ursaring and a shiny Ludicolo. I then spent a little bit more time getting my entire team to level 100. I then spent a little bit more time working on the base, making it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, because before with just the battlefield, it did look a tiny bit ugly. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It looks a lot better now. After that, I decided it was time to get myself another dragon type Pokemon. So I headed down into the ocean and got myself a bunch of fossils, creating a bunch of fossil machines and the cleaners to clean up all the fossils. And then I created another dragon type Pokemon, which of course is Dracovish. Then while I was AFKing around my base waiting for the fossils to finish, I had a Duraludon just swimming around in the little waterfall I created. So I went over and caught that guy because obviously he is a steel and dragon type. I then also claimed myself a tyrant from the fossil machine and then headed out into a jungle. I, now, I can't remember exactly why I was in the jungle biome because there's not many dragon type Pokemon that spawn there. I mean, maybe I was looking for a mega boss septile or something because that's a mega Pokemon that is a dragon type. On the bright side, I did end up finding myself a legendary Tapu Koko, which I ended up catching because you never know who will want a Tapu Koko. And eventually I might be able to trade it for a legendary dragon type Pokemon. So it's always worth catching them even if you can't use them. After that, another tournament started and I was super confident going into this, especially after my win last time although my team was not the greatest so i headed into my battles i beat the first player then my second battle happened but unfortunately i ended up getting defeated so no rewards for me this time i then headed back over to the jungle and made a giant platform as i wanted to complete a bingo card now these bingo cards have a bunch of random pokemon on them and you have to catch them to complete all of your squares on the bingo card now, I didn't want to just complete one line or one diagonal or one down. I wanted to complete the entire bingo card to see what rewards I got. So I headed out and caught as many Pokemon as I possibly could until eventually I finally completed the bingo card. But unfortunately, I didn't really get anything good. I then headed back over to the level grinder to evolve up a bunch more of my dragon Pokemon so that I could have every single dragon type Pokemon on my team. We then opened up a couple more lucky blocks where I ended up getting myself a another legendary upgrade. I was so excited to open this one. I then got an upgrade again into a Master Ball Lucky Block, where I ended up getting myself a shiny Reshiram, which of course is a Dragon type, meaning I finally had a Dragon type legendary. Let's go! Come on! After catching that guy, I then continued my quest to get every single Dragon type Pokemon to complete another one of my challenges for this 100 days. I started by catching myself a Bagon and evolving that up to a Salamence, and then I also evolved an Execute with a Leaf Stone up into the giant long-necked Alolan Exeggutor. So I headed over to the ice biome to have a certain Pokemon in particular spawn in for me. I created a giant platform up in the sky waiting for this Pokemon to spawn. And while I was waiting, I decided to head back and take on some more of the gyms where I finally ended up taking down the Steel Gym with help from my Swords Dancing Flygon with Earthquake, which made it so easy for me. I then headed back to the house and Hawk showed me that he made a giant dragon type symbol, which looked awesome. He then also decided to flex his Paradox Pokemon, being Paradox Charizard Burning Coat. I then headed back over to the gyms to do a little bit more training on my Pokemon, where I ended up taking on the Psychic Gym. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to defeat it though, so we headed into another server tournament. Now, this tournament started off pretty good. I had a really solid team, but unfortunately, once again, we made it through to round three, but then it got taken out. And with that tournament finish, it was time for our next rival fight. 
I started off with my shiny Reshiram, and Hawk started off with a Suian Gudra, which I didn't even know he had. Unfortunately, a lot of Hawk's team was completely different and caught me completely off guard because I trained for his old team and he changed up almost all of his Pokemon. So he ended up taking the dub finally and getting himself a rare Lucky Block. And of course, knowing my luck, Hawk ended up getting an upgrade to a Master Ball Lucky Block which means he's getting a shiny legendary in Latios, which is a dragon type Pokemon. I can't believe it. He's had two legendary Pokemon and they've both been dragons. How is he getting this lucky? I then headed back over to my ice area and finished off creating the giant platform, hoping for a certain Pokemon to spawn. And if you figured out exactly which Pokemon I'm trying to get to spawn right now, let me know in the comment section and I will heart your comment. When I get this Pokemon, it's going to be insane. I then continued exploring a little bit longer and ended up coming across a Mega X Charizard. Now, this thing was going to be very difficult to take out, but luckily my Dragon Ninja managed to clutch up for us and take down the Mega Charizard. Meaning I now have another Mega Stone that I'll be able to use on my Charizard, meaning I have a bunch more choices on what Pokemon I want to use. I'm going to need to get all of the Mega Pokemon too which is going to be a very difficult challenge. So I headed back to the jungle biome and eventually I came across the Mega Sceptile boss, which I ended up defeating and getting me the Sceptilite. So I headed back to the base and noticed that Hawk was just doing battles with a bunch of the guys on the server. And if you guys want to do this too, make sure to hit me up when I'm on the server because I will happily have a battle with you guys. It's so much fun. So I ended up watching Hawk for a little while, just doing his battles with viewers. And then I finally came across the forest I was looking for. Now this was a birch forest because I needed to find a Mega Altaria. Now, the problem here is that Mega Altaria is a dragon fairy type Pokemon. So my dragon moves won't be effective on this thing. But luckily for me, I ended up defeating it after a few tries. Now with that, I had all of the Mega Stones that I needed, including Mega Garchomp, Mega Ampharos, Mega Charizard X, Mega Sceptile, and finally a Mega Altaria. So I threw them all out to show off to Hawk. And I was pretty happy now that I had almost every single dragon type on my team. Obviously, I will clarify, when it comes to every dragon type, I'm not including every single legendary dragon type, because that would be a little bit outrageous. Now, whilst I continue to AFK on my ice platform, I decided to buy some lucky blocks, because you guys know I'm addicted to these by now. Like, it's bad. I'm sorry. I think I genuinely have an addiction to these things. So I opened them up, but... As always with gambling, I didn't get anything, so don't get addicted to these because it's bad. I then headed back over to the gyms to try and let off some steam, where I ended up defeating the Psychic Gym. Then I headed on to the next gym, which ended up being a Ghost-type gym. Luckily, it wasn't too difficult for me, and then finally, I was prepared and I was ready, so I headed over to the final gym, which of course is the Water Gym. Unfortunately though, I ended up getting defeated, which was absolutely devastating. So I spent a couple days now just AFKing over on my ice platform, until eventually, it finally happened. Finally! Yes! I got the Curum to spawn. Well done if you predicted that it was a Curum, because I want to create Curum White. By fusing the Curum and the Reshiram together with the DNA Splicer, I finally had Curum White, which was going to be super strong for me. Now that I had this, I thought, oh, it's fine. I'll go take on the gym again. But unfortunately, you can't take Curum into the gym battles. So I created my strongest team and eventually, after a few tries, took down the Water Gym. And after taking out the Water Gym, I thought I was done. But it turns out there was actually another gym. And I ended up taking out the fire gym with ease, especially because I had my depth fear with his signature water type move. And after heading home to flex Curum White to Hawk, turns out that he had something of his own to flex. And he pulled out a mega Rayquaza. Like, how did he even get, when did he get this? I didn't even see it at all. I can't believe this, man. Oh, no. I knew for this final rival battle, I had to be super prepared. So I headed back over to the level grinder, and I got all of my Pokemon up to level 100 that I was going to use for this rival battle. Gave them the best possible moves. And now it was time for the final rival fight. Me versus Hawk to decide who is the ultimate dragon type trainer. It was an intense battle, so many Pokemon were defeated, and it came down to the final two Pokemon, Dragon Ninja versus Mega Rayquaza. But luckily for me, 
I ended up taking the dub with my Dragon Ninja. My team was just strong enough to take down Hawk, crowning me the ultimate Dragon type trainer. In today's video, I will be attempting to survive 100 days with only a baby a legendary Pokemon. Now, there are loads of different custom baby legendaries, so make sure you stay tuned to see which ones I end up catching by the end of the video. And before we jump into the video, only 7% of you guys watching my videos are actually subscribed. So please consider hitting the sub button. It only takes two seconds, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alrighty then, so jumping into the server now, we obviously have our choice of all of the starter Pokemon. We have all of our shiny ones and all of the custom starters, but not only that, we also have all of the baby legendary Pokemon to pick for our starter. There's so many awesome baby legendary Pokemon, but you obviously know I have to pick my boy, baby Rayquaza. And here we are. All right, so we have got ourselves a baby Rayquaza. Look at this little beast. Let's go. He is so amazing. Let's check out his moveset as well quickly. So it looks like he's got the same ability as Rayquaza, which is Airlock. And then he also has Dragon Ascent, Crunch, Twister, and Ancient Power. Now, that is a pretty strong moveset, especially for a starting Pokemon like Baby Rayquaza. Now, I'm going to feed him these rare candies quickly. Ooh, ooh, Dragon Dance. Okay, we're definitely learning that one. There we go. Now, I'm pretty sure that Baby Rayquaza can evolve, but obviously, since we are doing, obviously, 100 days with Baby Pokemon, we are not going to be evolving any of our Baby Pokemon. Now, in order to get more Baby Pokemon, you might be wondering... Well, how do you get them? It is unfortunately quite a difficult process. What we have to do is find legendary Pokemon and defeat them. And with that, we have a chance of them dropping a legendary egg. And then obviously once we get the egg, we just need to hatch it and then we'll get the baby Pokemon. So what we're going to have to do throughout this 100 days is hunt down legendary Pokemon and defeat them and hope that we get ourselves legendary baby Pokemon eggs. Now, first things first, I think I'm going to head onto the GTS just to see if anyone's selling any baby Pokemon at the moment. Okay, all right. So it looks like we have two baby Pokemon on here, which includes baby Palkia and a baby Heatran. Now, in order to buy these guys, though, I am going to get 55k for the Heatran and 125k for the Palkia. And if we check out my balance at the moment, as you can see, I only have 15k. So we're going to have to do a lot of grinding in order to get ourselves enough money to buy those Pokemon. All right, so I have actually figured something out on our plan in order to get a bit more money. So... There are in the spawn at the moment, these things are treasure chests. Now, every time you find one, you get an awesome reward like those 16 Ultra Balls right there. And there are 24 of these rewards to find. And apparently when you get all of them, you get a massive reward at the end. So I think what I'm going to do is just run around in spawn and try and find as many of these treasure chests as I possibly can. Like right here, there's one. And there we go. Okay, so we get 5,000 coins. Now, I'm not going to show you guys everywhere they are because obviously if I do, you be able to watch the video back and just see where all the treasure chests are so i'm just going to show a couple of them and we will be back when i found all 25 of the treasure chests yo no way i just managed to get a master ball for my 15th treasure chest that is huge it doesn't actually help us though. oh no because we're not really catching the legendary pokemon we're defeating them all so actually this master ball would be great to sell and then we might be able to get a bit of money and then afford another legendary pokemon that would be huge and there we go all right we have now completed our treasure hunt got ourselves a fusion shard as our final reward and we also have now got $65,000, which means that we can actually now afford another baby legendary Pokemon. Not to mention, we also got ourselves some lucky blocks. But let's go ahead and open up our lucky blocks. And there we go. All right, so it looks like we have agreed with Bumps 6 to trade the specific Pokemon paper for 20,000 Poke Dollars, which is absolutely huge. Here we go. There is that one there for you, sir. And there we go. We've now got 20K more, which means our balance now stands at 85,000 Poke Dollars. All righty then. So it's time to open up all of our lucky blocks that we've got right here. So let's place down our three common lucky blocks. Please give me something good. Swaddle, Glyscore, and an upgrade. Let's go. 
All right, it's time to open up our uncommon lucky blocks. Here we go. Let's put them both down. Please give me another upgrade. Yo, there's no way. Let's go. A rare lucky block upgrade. Come on, please. All right, so we do need to save this rare lucky block, though, because if we do open this up, it will give us a guaranteed legendary Pokemon. Now, the problem there is, obviously, we are going to have to try and defeat the legendary Pokemon. And with the baby Ray cards that we have at the moment, moment we obviously can't defeat any legendary pokemon and now what i think i'm gonna do with my 85,000 that i have i'm gonna have a little look on here again so i could buy the baby palkia if i waited a little bit longer or we could go ahead and buy ourselves the baby heatran and because we need as much firepower as possible i'm just gonna go ahead and buy myself this baby heatran right here now let's go ahead and check him out <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what is what is going on here? I'm so sorry. No, baby Heatran. Now, there's one thing that this thing reminds me of. If anyone's ever played Ark Survival Evolved, you've got the gas bag in that, and it looks exactly like a gas bag from Ark. That is hilarious. I mean, nonetheless, so it is another baby legendary to add to our arsenal along with baby Rayquaza. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and head over to the training area and get these guys up to at least maybe level 50 so that we have a chance of taking on a legendary Pokemon. There we go. Let's head over to the training area and we'll get our guys up to level 50 and then we shall be back. Now, we also did obviously get an EXP all from the treasure chest, so we can put that on to give us a bunch more XP. And we also do have 24 rare candies and five extra large candies. Yes, we can get these both to level 50, but the problem is they do try to evolve when they hit level 50 which is not what we want, obviously, because we want to keep them as baby Pokemon. So we are going to have to get some Everstones, I'm pretty sure, so that they don't evolve whenever they do level up. And we'll find a nice little spot maybe up here on the hill, and then we will open up our rare lucky block. Now, we've just got to hope and pray that we get something from here that will include one of those Pokemon. Here we go. <sighs> we got ourselves a Cosmog. No, that is not good. Bruh. Well, I'm hoping we can use this guy to sell maybe or maybe trade for a legendary Pokemon that can be a baby. And there we go. All right. So we have managed to do a trade with MM. We're going to be giving him the Cosmog and he's going to be giving us a baby Palkia. So let's head on over into the Poke Center, jump onto the trading machine. I'm going to add in the Cosmog and he's adding in the baby Palkia. And boom, just like that, I now have my third baby Pokemon. Shout out to MM. Let's go. Look at this little beast. <laughs> he looks hilarious. I can't lie. I have definitely gone for two of the most derpy baby Pokemon to start with. The airbag from Ark and this. Like, what is even going on here? <laughs> All right, so I think the next thing that we need to do is find ourselves a location that we can make a base. Now, I want to make a base in a location where a bunch of legendary Pokemon spawn. Problem is, all of the Pokemon will spawn in different areas, and it's normally one legendary per certain area in a biome, if that makes sense. So I think for now, I'm pretty happy with this location right here. If we have the Desert Hills, it means that we could have the legendary Pokemon Groudon spawn on us. And Groudon has a baby Pokemon, so if we have one spawn and we defeat it, we will get ourselves a baby Groudon. I think we're going to stand right on this block here, and then boom! Just like that, we now have ourselves a little sand pyramid house. I'm not obviously the best builder, but this is definitely going to do perfectly. It's got a nice little area here, a little wall carpet on the floor, and we have obviously all of our chests, a furnace, and a crafting table. Now, when it comes to legendary Pokemon on the server, there is an increased chance of getting legendary Pokemon when you head into the war zone. Now, obviously in the war zone, you can't really take a lot of overpowered Pokemon in, and I definitely don't I don't want to take my legendary pokemon in because if i end up losing a battle against another player they can steal one of my baby legendary pokemon and then we'll have to get even more which is not going to help our challenge whatsoever so what i think i'm going to do now is head out and catch myself six different pokemon level them up to level 100 and then head into the war zone to see if i can get any legendary pokemon to spawn and finally just like that we now have an entire team of level 100 pokemon 
And it's now time to head into the war zone. No, that's so sad. I saw a Reggie Ice spawn somewhere in the war zone. But unfortunately, someone is already engaged in battle with that Reggie Ice, which means I'm not going to be able to get it. Luckily for me, though, Reggie Ice doesn't actually have a baby Pokemon variant, so it would have mattered too much to us anyway. Well, it looks like this guy also has a baby Zashi as well, so I might try and get that off of him. Ah, oh, and rip. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to find anything this time. I'm I'm very determined, though. I want to head back into the war zone. How much money do we have left? Let's have a little look. We have 24k. Let's head back into the war zone. I'm super determined. I want to stay there until we get at least one legendary to spawn on us. While talking to Lucario in the war zone, he has told me that he wants a fairy psychic higher IV Pokemon. For example, something like Gardevoir, and then he'll try me the baby Zashian. So we're going to try and make that happen later on once we finish in the war zone and get ourselves another baby Pokemon. And once again, still no legendary Pokemon in the war zone. We're going to head back one more time and if we don't get anything, we're going to move on. Unfortunately, just like that, it doesn't look like we're going to be finding a legendary Pokemon in the war zone today, which does suck quite a lot, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. Sometimes you get a load of legendaries, sometimes you'll get maybe one and sometimes just like that, you will get none. Not everything was bad. Obviously, we did get our new challenge from the war zone, which is to head out and find ourselves a Gardevoir that we can trade to Lucario in order to get ourselves a baby Zacian. So let's RTP out and try and find ourselves a Birch Forest, as that is exactly where routes will spawn. Hey, and there we go. Just like that, we have found ourselves a birch forest. Now, I'm pretty sure it is currently dawn. So if we run around, we may actually be able to find ourselves a route. But worst comes to worst, we just stick around this biome for a little while. And hopefully we will have a route spawn. Wait, I think I just heard... Yo, yes, there we go. All right, let's catch this route. And let's just hope that its IVs are pretty good. Okay, there we go. Let's do slash IVs four. No, 60%. Oh, that's, that's still really good. But unfortunately, we need something 75% or higher. So we're going to have to continue looking. Come on, please be the right IVs that we need. Oh, 33%. That is really, really bad. Here is another one. Come on. 59%. Okay, we're getting there. We are getting there. There's another one. Come on, please. No, 70%. Okay, let's check this one. IV6. And there we go. Finally, we have got a 76% route right here. Let's throw her out. There we go. All right, so we've just spoken to Lucario and met up with him at the Poke Center. It's now time to head into the Pokemon Trader, put in the route, and he's put in the egg. There we go. Thank you very much, sir. Now we have ourselves a Zacian egg. Now all that we have to do is run around for a little while and eventually this egg will hatch into a baby Zacian. Now I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take for me to hatch out this egg, but since it is a legendary Pokemon, normally eggs that have got better Pokemon inside of them, for example like pseudo legendaries, will take a lot longer than a normal egg to hatch. So we might be running around for a little while. Okay, so I bought myself some movement pads as I'm pretty sure if I set them down in correct pattern, it will mean that I can just sit here AFK while my egg hatches out for me. Let's just do this. And there we go. All right, as you can see, I'm just now running around in a circle. So hopefully this will make my egg hatch a lot quicker. So we're just going to sit here and wait for the egg to hatch. <laughs> There's a, a Sandaconda accidentally walked into my pads and he's just following me around on this thing now. <laughs> I guess he really wants his egg to hatch as well. Oh God, I feel awful for this poor Sandaconda. He's just being abused. <laughs> he's forever stuck on here now. What? Oh, let's go! I was just AFKing here waiting for this egg to hatch. Because as you can see right here, if I can jump off the pads. Come on, please. There we go. All right. So as you can see right here, the egg still looks like it's going to take a very long time to hatch. And while I was waiting for it to hatch, we've had a Groudon spawn. Let's go. And Groudon is especially amazing because it does have a baby legendary. So if we defeat this guy, we will have a 50% chance of an egg dropping from him, which would be huge. 
huge. Come on. All right, let's take him on and see what we get. Okay, I think we're going to start with a dragon dance. Okay, he's gone for the rest. That's fine. He can't hit me because I'm a flying type. I don't know if he even has any moves that can hurt me, which is huge. Let's just dragon dance up with baby Rayquaza. And then let's hit it big. Okay, cool. We're d Please. There we go. All right, we took it down. Please give me an egg. And there we go. Let's go. A baby Groudon egg. Let's collect that. We've got ourselves a heat rock as well and a ruby. There we go. Holy, we got ourselves another egg. Let's go. Now, the one problem, though, with getting all of these eggs is... I've already spent about four days trying to get this Zacian egg to hatch. And since we don't have the slash hatch command, it means that we're not going to be able to instantly hatch these guys. So we're going to have to just run around for a long, long time to get both of these eggs to hatch. Let's head over to the warp training area. Because in here, we can obviously get our Pokemon up to high levels. And I'm thinking if we ever encounter another legendary Pokemon... Obviously, Groudon was a ground type, which meant that I would have an easy time because Rayquaza is a flying type. But if we come up against anything else, we may struggle quite a lot. So I'm thinking we might as well get the baby legendaries we have at the moment up to level 100. And then maybe we could try to take on a gym with the ones we've got, see how powerful they are. But at least we know that we're going to have another two soon. We've just got to get them hatched. Okay, let, let's maybe not take on the level 70 straight away. Let's go down a couple levels so we're fighting things more around our level. I also have now got Everstones as well that I've put onto all of our legendaries so that they don't always try to evolve every single time we level them as well. Much, but okay, this is much more our speed. We should be able to take this out. We are burnt though. No! Okay, let's go into Heatran, see if we can hit with like an Iron Head or something. Okay, Ancient Power maybe? Okay, cool. So Ancient Power looks like it's going to be the one that will do it. Okay, this is going to take a long time of leveling. So we'll be back when we get all three of our Pokemon to level 100. And perfect. Just like that, we now have three level 100 baby Pokemon. Of course, we have baby Rayquaza, baby Heatran, and baby Palkia. We have a perfect moveset on all of them as well. And they are all EV trained up to be as perfect as they can be. Now, we're going to head back to the house. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time just sat on here trying to get our eggs to hatch. Now, I have spent a bunch of time trying to get these eggs to hatch. So I thought I'd take a little break and head over to the gym. So I wanted to take in this team and just see how far I can get with my free baby legendaries to start with. Let's do double D dance. There we go. And then we're just going to dragon claw our way to victory. There we go. Let's dragon claw again. Just hit a bunch of dragon claws. And there we go. All right. We have defeated the psychic gym. Let's go. That one was pretty easy. So let's head into the next one if we type slash gyms next up is the dark gym okay i mean the dark gym leader is not here i'm a bit confused by that let's try and head into a different gym and see if there's any more gym leaders there okay so we've got another gym leader right here let's see if we can take them on as well so it looks like i need to get the dark gym to challenge the next one but for some reason, the Dark Gym Leader is not actually here, so I can't progress in the gyms. Well, I mean, it was a good run while it started. Let's head off and do something else. So what I've decided I'm going to do now is grab up all of these little plates right here. And I'm going to head into a different biome in which another legendary Pokemon spawns. As my idea here is basically, if I can get a legendary Pokemon to spawn, the best way that I'm going to get it to spawn is by AFKing in that biome. So why not kill two birds with one stone and just hatch out all of my eggs while searching for legendary Pokemon? Now, there are loads and loads of different Pokemon that we could go for. But the one in particular that I want to look for is a Kyogre. Then we can complete the Weather Trio and have all three Groudon, Kyogre and Rayquaza on our team. But in order to do that, I need to find myself a deep ocean. And I also need the conditions to be raining. So this one could take a little while, but I think the best plan of action here is just to RTP until we eventually find an area that's by a ocean biome. Wait, yo, yo, yo. I'm just running around right now trying to explore to try and find myself an ocean biome. But I think I have just... Is it in here? I think I hear it. Hang on. Yeah. Yo! Yes, let's go! So an Azelf had spawned in a forest biome, which is right where I am. Let's go. So let's head into the battle with this guy. Now, you may be wondering why I would want an Azelf, especially when I'm trying to catch only baby Pokemon. But there is a baby Pokemon that I can get by summoning one with the Lake Trio. 
So if I catch myself as Elf Yuxi and Mesprit, I'll be able to get myself a Giratina. And if I defeat the Giratina and hopefully get an egg, I can get myself a baby Giratina. So let's go ahead and catch this as Elf, and then we're going to continue looking for the ocean biome. If we just quickly check, let's see where the Yuxi spawns. So it looks like it spawns in the dark forest. Perfect. And then Mesprit also spawns in a birch forest. Okay, so we'll be looking for a dark oak forest, a birch forest, and an ocean biome. Whichever one we come across first, that's the one that we're going to sit in. All right, so we found ourselves an ocean biome. I need to make up, I need to find some wood as I want to make up a boat and then head out onto the ocean and then try and find myself a little spot that's just surrounded by deep ocean where I can set up our movement plates and then we're going to AFK for a little while, hopefully get these eggs to hatch and maybe have a Kyogre spawn if we're lucky enough. There we go. Right, let's grab a crafting bench, put in here, make a boat, and let's set off. Perfect. All right, here seems like a great place to do it. We just need to go and buy a bunch of blocks. Let's buy a bunch of dirt. Probably going to be the best way to go about this. Let's grab one stack of dirt. And then we need to head down to the bottom and then just build up a little platform. There we go. Right, so let's place these down, make a little bit more room here, and then like that. Okay, perfect. So now we have our little platform. We are now going to just wait around, see if we can get anything cool to spawn if not we're just going to sit here and hatch out these eggs because as you can see hatching is going to take a long time and hatching is going to take a long time yeah, yeah, i'm pretty sure wait oh my god yes oh my god okay we need to get off this we need to get off this come on let us off let us off okay we're off we're off let's go finally we've had the kyogre spawn come on let's go baby Woo! now we just actually need well, okay we need to defeat this thing and just hope and pray that it drops us an egg. Okay, come on. Please, Kyogre, give us an egg. There we go. All right. We got ourselves a baby Kyogre egg. Let's go. Also, we got ourselves three sapphires, two damp brooks, and one water gem. But we don't care about any of that. We only care about the baby Kyogre egg. Let's go. And I kid you not, it's been about three hours now, and they still haven't hatched i'm not really too sure what's going on it has changed on before obviously like on the kyogre egg it says it looks like this egg will take a long time to hatch now it says what will hatch from this it doesn't seem close to hatching so it has got closer but for spending almost four hours out here just waiting for it to hatch seems a little bit ridiculous to me so um i may try and figure out how to get the slash hatch command or maybe just ask someone on the server if they can hatch them for me as this is getting a bit ridiculous and i don't think i'm gonna have enough time to hatch all of these eggs but anyways let's collect up all of our moving pads right here and we're gonna move into the next biome to try and find our next legendary obviously we're still looking for the other lake trios so mesprit and yuxi so i'm just gonna rtp now and try and find myself a birch forest or a dark oak forest all right there we go so so we have found the birch biome that we're looking for. We just need to find a little area now by a lake. There we go. That looks perfect. All right, so we'll set up our little pads again, and then hopefully we'll either hatch out these legendaries or find ourselves the mesprit that should hopefully spawn in this little area down here. Hey, and there we go. Finally, let me just jump off of here. There we go. One of our eggs has finally hatched into a baby Zacian. Look at how cute this guy is. Let's go. I don't know why he's flying, but that is so cute. I'm not sure why he's purple, because I'm pretty sure Zashin is not purple, but we'll take it nonetheless. That's such a cute little baby legendary. Let's go. I don't know why he's flying. Oh, there we go. Woo, little doggy. <gasps> Yo, wait, I'm pretty sure. Yes, let's go. Finally. And we also got the Mesprit to spawn. And there we go. All right, we're into the battle with the Mesprit now. Once we catch this, we only need one more of the Lake Trio, which of course is Yuxi. So after we catch this guy, we're going to head straight over to a dark oak forest. And perfect. We caught ourselves a Mesprit. Now we have both Azelf and Mesprit. We, of course, only need to get ourselves a U. And I can't forget to pick up these movement pads as well. We need to grab these. And then hopefully we can hatch out both our last baby legendaries and find ourselves a Uxy in the process. Oh. And that is actually crazy luck. I went silent thinking it's going to take me ages to RTP into this biome. And I've actually managed to find it straight away. Now we just need to look for a little lake inside of the Dark Oak Forest. And we can set up our movement pads once again. 
and try and hatch these out while waiting for the Uxie to spawn. Hey, and finally, we have had our baby Groudon hatch. Let's see if we can jump off of here. Come on, there we go. And let's throw out our baby Groudon. He looks so cool. Yo, look, look at how cute this guy is. He looks so much better than the other one, I can't lie. Compared to this, like, baby Heatran and baby Palkia, this Groudon is so much cooler. But we still have one more egg to hatch out, which, of course, is going to be our baby Kyogre, so that we'll have baby Kyogre and Groudon and our Rayquaza, of course. Then we'll have all of the Weather Trio to complete one of our challenges for this 100 days. So I'm going to be super boring again and get back on this conveyor belt and hopefully have Yuxi spawn or just hatch out another egg. This is taking forever. And also it hurts my head. I mean, look, look yeah, this unfortunately is what I've been staring at for the past four hours, maybe, well, it was four hours before. Now it's probably up to about six, seven hours maybe of just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, help. I was just eating some food. I've just come back to my screen and it looks like our baby Kyogre has hatched. Let's jump off of here if we can. Can I get off please? Wait, and there's a Yuxi. Yo, wait, what? When did that spawn? Yo, wait, so we got the baby Kyogre to spawn, which I've got to say is so cute. And then we also have a Yuxi down here too. Yes, that is insane. Let's go ahead and catch this Yuxi, which means we now have all three of the lake trio. Let's go. All right, and there we go. We've caught ourselves the Yuxi. Let's head into the PC. There it is right there. And with that, we now have all three of the lake guardian trio now i'm pretty sure the only thing that we have left to do now with these guys is get their friendship up as you can see here yeah so you've got the happiness which are currently is at 70 i want to say we need to max out that happiness and we also need to get them to i think level 70 and then we can right click on them with the rubies and get the rubies that we need to make the red chain. All right, so we've grabbed out our three late guardians, of course, Mesprit, Azelf, and Yuxi. And we're also going to level up Baby Groudon and Baby Kyogre. I will eventually get around to doing Baby Zacian, but obviously we need a high-level Pokemon like our Baby Palkia to take on the high-level trainers and level up the rest of our team. So if we head over to the warp training area and then head into the level 60 to level 80, and we will use our baby Palkia to take on these Charizards right here, which we can easily one tap and get a bunch of levels for all of our Pokemon. So essentially, all we're going to be doing here is just sitting here for a little while. With Yo, look at that Zacian. That is so cool. Like, it looks like an Anubis Zacian or something like that, but that is awesome. Yo. But yeah, anyway, so... We're going to sit here a little while, get all of our late guardians up to level 70 and get their friendship maxed out. And then hopefully get both our baby Groudon and Kyogre up to level 100 as well. All right, so all of our Pokemon should now have max happiness. There we go. So we've got 255, 255 and 255 on the Uxie here. Perfect. So now I'm pretty sure if we head back to the house, we did pick up some gems when we defeated the Groudon earlier on. So if we grab those out, we should now be able to throw this out. And I'm pretty sure if we left click, there we go. So we've got the Ruby of Emotion. We've got the Ruby of Willpower. And finally, we have the Ruby of Knowledge. Perfect. So now we can just chuck these guys back away in the PC. Perfect. And we can grab out our team of baby Pokemon. Now, if we put these into our inventory, we should be able to create... There we go. All right, so we've created the red chain. Perfect. So now if we were to head over to the Warp Shrines area... I'm pretty certain, yes, right here. So we got the Time Space Altar, and this is used to summon Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, and Arceus. Now, the red chain isn't the only thing we're going to need. Obviously, because if you had the red chain, you'd be able to summon any of these, you'd think. But you do, in fact, need the Grissius Orb for Giratina. Now, in order to get this, we are going to have to defeat a bunch of bosses as it does come as a boss drop. Luckily for us, we do have the Warp Boss Tower. Inside of here, we have a bunch of different boss Pokemon. I know there's a bunch of common ones here, but if we head up the elevator, there. So, as you can see, we have an uncommon boss here. If we keep heading up, there might be better bosses. Sometimes there isn't. There's another uncommon over there. So yeah. So when we defeat these guys, let's head into the battle right here. Let's use Dragon's Ascent. They are a little bit more powerful than me, so we are going to have to be very careful. But when we do defeat them, we do, of course, get, well, a bunch of XP for our baby Zacian and a bunch of boss drops too, including a mental herb, 
XP candy medium, and of course, 200 Poké Dollars. So now all we really need to do is just defeat as many bosses as we possibly can and hope that we manage to get the Grissius Orb. So I guess we'll just fill up our inventory with a bunch of boss drops. And then we'll be back when we finally get the Grissius Orb. And there we go. All right, so we have got ourselves the Grissius Orb right here. Finally, I mean, we've had quite a few trips back and forth from here. Like, we filled up over two double chests worth of items. This is crazy. But luckily, we got exactly what we were looking for, which, of course, is the Grissius Orb. All right, so we've made it to the Warp Shrines area, and now it's time to summon in Giratina. There is, of course, a 25,000 coin fee, but luckily, after spending a long time in the boss tower, we have accumulated the perfect amount of money with 31,000 Poké Dollars. So all that's left to do now is hope that we're able to to defeat Giratina. Let's put in our red chain and now let's put in our Grissius Orb and here we go. I'm pretty certain now we don't have to do anything else and there he is. The god of the underworld, Giratina. Okay, he is only level 70 and we are level 100. So hopefully a spatial rend takes it out in a one hit. There we go. Now let's just hope that we got an egg and we did. We got ourselves an orb a never ice scrap and a baby giratina egg there we go let's go that is huge so now if we head back to the house open up our pc we of course have got our egg right here that is amazing come on and another thing that's great about getting the egg on the first try there with the rubies that you get on this server from the mesprit yuxi and azelf you can only do it once so if we failed that we would have had to make an entirely new red chain and the problem with that is getting another red chain would mean getting all of these lake guardians once again, which would take forever. So we got very lucky there in getting the egg that we needed. Come on. But of course, there's always a silver lining to everything that we do. That, of course, is yes, we did get the egg, but we are going to have to spend a bunch of time hatching this out again. So I think I'm just going to save you guys all the effort. I'm going to get the movement pads back out and I will see you all when I have finally hatched out this baby Giratina. Let's jump onto our movement pads and we're just going to sit here for as long as it takes until eventually our baby Pokemon hatches from the egg. And there we go. Just like that. Let's see if we can get off this machine. We have hatched out our baby Giratina. And look at how cute this guy is. Yo, this is by far my favorite one. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I didn't even realize. Wait, yo, we can ride the baby Pokemon. <laughs> that is hilarious. I didn't realize we could do this. Look at us go. <laughs> Wait, yo, there's an Urshifu tower right here as well. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> Luckily, we don't need a baby Urshifu because it doesn't actually exist. Because obviously, I guess baby Urshifu is just a cub food. But nonetheless, that is amazing that we can ride on this baby Giratina. And he is so, so cute. Although he's now flying away. Um, come back, man. There we go. Look at this legend. And with that, it now completes another one of our goals. We did obviously complete it before, but I did forget to mention that with our full team of six baby Pokemon, we have now completed another challenge, which of course is to get six baby legendary Pokemon in the next 100 days. We've trapped another Pokemon. I'm sorry, Helioptile. This is your life now. Oh, and no, oh no, please. No, Karma. Okay, we're good, we're good. I'm sure he'll be fine. But anyways, I'm pretty happy with the team that we've managed to get right now. And I think the last thing that we need to complete during this 100 days is defeat all six gym leaders and then take on the ultimate challenger. So we've only managed to take down one of the gyms so far. So I think it's time to head back to the level training, level up all of our baby Pokemon to level 100, and then head over to the gyms and start to defeat as many as we possibly can. There we go. All right. Right, let's head into the battle, take on the trusty Charizard trainer and destroy him. If I could hit a Hydro Pump, thank you, Palkia, and get a bunch of levels on all of our Pokemon. This hopefully shouldn't take too long, especially since we get a bunch of XP from Charizard. And our legendaries are leveling up very fast. We're just going to have to make sure to be... We're going to just have to make sure to be very careful as we only have three Everstones. And obviously, Baby Giratina is not going to have one. So we've just got to avoid leveling him up and then accidentally evolving him because that would not end well. And there we go. Let's stop the evolution of Baby Giratina. And 
finally, our entire team is now level 100. Which, of course, means we now need to just make the best moveset possible for each of our baby legendaries and then head over to the gyms and start defeating every single one of them. So let's send it over to the Warp Mart, head upstairs on the elevator, and go ahead and talk to the move relearner. Now, in here, we can learn every single move that we need. I made sure to leave the moves as they were for now, just so that we could go ahead and do this afterwards and get all of the moves that we need. All right, there we go. So we have now completed our entire set of baby legendaries on their move sets. We can go through them quickly now. Have this on my baby Palkia, this on my baby Rayquaza, this is baby Giratina. We've got baby Zacian, baby Groudon, and of course, a baby Kyogre. Now, if we head over to the second gym, obviously, we've already taken out this first gym right here. It's now time to take on the dark gym, which is the second gym leader. As you can see here, I need to take out all the others all the way down until the electric gym. And after completing that, it's then time to take on the ultimate trainer. Obviously, this is only the second gym though, so it's not like it's going to be too difficult for us to defeat. And it looks like we are starting with a Murkrow. All right, let's just hit it with the spatial rend. And I avoid it. No, that's not good. We don't want them to avoid it. Okay, half HP. There we go. All right, this should be a really easy fight. And boom, just like that. We sweep the entire gym with a baby Palkia. Easy peasy. Let's go, baby. All right. It's now time that we take on the next gym battle, which, of course, is the ground gym leader. Now, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult than usual, especially because it has a lot of ground type moves and steel type moves. And a lot of our team, unfortunately, are weak to these moves. So we're going to have to be very careful on how we play this. Origin Pulse takes down the Hippowdon straight away. That's what we love. We'll go to Baby Rayquaza here. We'll get rid of the Sandstorm and we'll predict the Earthquake. Now we'll go for the Dragon Dance and let's try and hit a Dragon's Ascent. But we do get taken down there. That's not ideal. Now here, let's go Baby Palkia and we will hit the Hydro Pump. There we go. All right. And then we're going to try for another Hydro Pump. But we do get taken down, unfortunately. Baby Kyogre. Let's go for the Ice Beam. And we take it down. That's huge. Okay. We are going to have to go for another Ice Beam here. But that is completely fine. Baby Kyogre does go down there. But now let's go into... Let's go into our Baby Groudon. And we're going to hit the Earthquake. Boom. Okay. We've taken it down. That is huge. Okay. We need to now try and take down this Nidoking. King. He does hit the Ice Beam. But we do survive. And we hit the earthquake. We need to take down Quagsire now. The only thing I have for Quagsire is Solar Beam. And we take it down and defeat the ground gym. Come on. All right, so we're heading into the next gym now. I'm not too sure what typing this gym is. So let's head in and find out. Okay, so we're up against the water gym now. Okay, I don't know how easy we're going to take down this gym. So we're just going to give it a go and see how much damage we can do. We're just going to keep spamming the ice beams as much as we possibly can can on the Kyogre here, which is unfortunately going to get taken down. I think uh, I don't really know what to do here. Let's go into baby Zacian and we're gonna go for a sacred sword, which is super effective. There we go. All right, we took down the Lapras. That is huge. Go for a play rough and we almost take it out in one hit. That's huge. Now we've got a zoom roll out. Let's go into a baby Palkia and we're gonna hit it with an earth power. Okay, and we almost take it out, but not quite, unfortunately. Baby Rayquaza, though, should be able to finish this off with an extreme speed, but it does switch out. Okay, that's fine. Let's go for a D-Dance because we knew it's going to recover. Maybe we'll hit it with a Dragon Claw. That's pretty good damage. Come on. Okay, he's going to recover again. Let's go for a D-Dance. Hit a big Dragon Claw. And I have been burned. That's not ideal. But we do take it down, which is fine. Now, I think we've just got to full send it and go for the Dragon's Ascent. And we hit it. Let's go. Oh, okay. So we do have the Mega Evolution right here of the Mega Gyarados. But I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. If Baby Rayquaza wasn't burned, we would destroy this right now. And we do get taken down. Okay, so Baby Groudon is our next option. Let's go for the solar beam. And we almost take it down. But it does get us just about. If we are faster, we can hit the shadow force. But we do unfortunately go down. No. Ah, We have unfortunately lost to the water gym. So now I'm pretty sure if we try to head back into the battle, we have to wait another 5 hours and 57 minutes before we can challenge it again. No. So as we are epically failing at all of these gyms, I've just noticed on the GTS that there is a rare lucky block on here for 200 and 50k 
Now, on the server, throughout these 100 days, we've been collecting loads of money, just in case any more baby Pokemon pop up. And we have 245,000 Poke Dollars. So we are 5k away from affording that rare lucky block. So I'm thinking we just go home and we try and sell as much as we possibly can. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, I've just teleported home. And it says in the chat that a Hooper has spawned in the desert hills of biome. And that is it right there. No way. That is hilarious. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that isn't a baby version of Hooper. So that isn't going to unfortunately help us. But we will definitely catch this guy. That is hilarious. Let's just throw the Master Ball as we aren't even trying to catch any legendary Pokemon at the moment. And there we go. We have caught the legendary Hooper. That is brilliant. We literally just teleported back to our base purely to find items to sell. And we've just caught a Hooper that spawned on us. That is crazy. And I'm stuck on the planet. And I'm stuck on the stupid conveyor belt. Get away. Thank you. Right. So, um, what? What can we sell from here? Maybe the stones? Let's just grab out a bunch of stuff that we might be able to sell and see what we can get for it. Okay, let's head back over here. Head back over to the shopkeeper and let's go to sell. Let's just get rid of all of this stuff right here. Come on. That's put us at 1k left to get. Come on. Surely we can find something to sell that will make us hit that 1k mark. Let's grab out all this stuff. Grab out this stuff. Okay, hopefully that will be enough. Let's head back over to the shop and and there we go. The leftovers puts us just over 250k. Let's head back. We'll drop off all of the stuff that we don't need like that. And now let's head onto the GTS and let's grab ourselves this rare lucky block for 250k. Right, we've got the lucky block, guys. It's time to open it up. And let's just hope that we get something we can defeat in order to get ourselves a new baby legendary to help us defeat the water type gym. Alrighty, here we go. Let's open up our rare lucky Lucky block and see what we are going to get. Come on, please give me something good, Pixelmon gods. Yo, wait, Azonius, let's go. Yes, no, this is really good. This is actually insane. Oh my, okay. We need to defeat this thing and just hope that we get ourselves a legendary egg. Come on, please. Let's go for the, here we go. Come on, let's go for the Aura Sphere. Come on, please give me a Pokemon egg. Yes. There we go. We got ourselves a, a baby Xerneas egg. Let's go. Let's grab that out. Thank you. Let's go. Woohoo. Okay, let's grab out our egg next to the baby heat tram right here. We'll grab out the baby Kyogre. And uh, there we go. All right, so we have our Xerneas egg. We just need to hatch this guy and then we will level him up to level 100 and then head back over to the gyms and hope that this baby Xerneas will turn the tides and help us defeat the water type gym. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you guys. I ain't gonna be sat around here for so long waiting for this egg to hatch again. Like you already saw how painful it was last time. Luckily, I got in touch with the admins of the Smash MC server and I managed to get myself the command slash hatch, which means that I can literally just type in slash hatch and then the number in my party. Of course, this is number six and a boom. Just like that, we have hatched our Pokemon egg. I ain't gonna be sitting around for so long, especially on a 100 day video where we don't actually have a lot of time. I am not gonna be waiting around on this conveyor belt that entire time. So we had to speed the process up a little bit and hatch up this amazingly cute little Bambi looking Xerneas. Oh, it's so cute. This is the first time that I'm seeing these baby Pokemon along with probably a lot of you guys too. And look at how amazing this looks. I mean, it is just, you know, being dumb and sp oh oh dear okay uh, you know what well i'll wait for the xerneas to finish getting its you know steps in i guess we're gonna go level this guy up and then head back over to the water gym all right here we go so we've made it back over to the water gym we've got our baby xerneas with a new move set a held item and of course level 100 it's time to try and take on the gym again and see if we can take it any differently than the last time all right here we go let's head on in come on let's see what we can do with our baby xerneas here okay i think for this turn i'm gonna start off by going for a Geomancy. There we go. All right, we have put on the Geomancy. We've raised all of our special attack and our special defense. 
and our speed. Okay, let's go for a Thunderbolt. And there we go. We one tap the Toxapex. Okay, now let's go for a Horn Leech. We take a load of damage off of it. There we go. All right, we take it down. That's huge. I gotta say, guys, this Xerneas is carrying me right now, really turning the tides for this gym. Okay, let's go for a Thunderbolt. And we take it down again. Let's go. Okay, so we've taken down the Azumarill. It's now time to take on the Lantern. Let's go for a Horn Leech. And we destroy it so well. Okay, come on, please. We've got this. A Thunderbolt takes down the Lapras. A Thunderbolt should take down the Gyarados as well, even though it mega -ed. And finally, we just need to take down the Lantern, which we destroy. And we get ourselves the next gym badge. Let's go. Baby Xerneas is OP. Come on. Okay, so we've headed into the battle against the Rock Gym Leader this time. Let's go for the Origin Pulse to kickstart. We take it down, which is amazing. Now let's go for another Origin Pulse. Almost take down the Shuckle, but Baby Giratina comes in next. Okay, let's go for the Aura Sphere here and see how much damage we do. Nice. Okay, that's pretty good damage. Let's go for another Aura Sphere. We do get taken down by the Crunch, but that is completely fine because we will hopefully be able to take it out on this next hit right here. Let's go back to Baby Kyogre, hit the Origin Pulse. Now we just have to hope that we can take a Grass Knot. We do, and we take down the Nihilego. That is huge. Okay, but we do, unfortunately, go down to the Mega Aerodactyl. I think here, let's go into Baby Groudon. Let's just go for a big Solar Beam, see what damage we can do. Okay, and we'll go for a Brick Break. We do, unfortunately, get crit there, which is not ideal. Hmm. Okay, let's go into Baby Heatran here, and we're going to go for... Let's go for the Iron Head. We do get taken down by the Earthquake, though. No. Okay, let's go to our Baby Rayquaza are here and we're gonna go for the dragon claw almost taking it down we survived the jaw wing beat and we take it down okay that's huge now for the dragon's ascent we do big damage to the cradilly dragon's ascent one more okay we need to go for the dragon dance here we need to hope that we survive a toxic we don't know okay it's cradilly versus a baby azernius will we be able to clutch up here i do not know let's go for the geomancy we do get toxic but that is fine let's go for the horn leech try and get some of our health back it's not gonna do enough moon blast and we take it down okay this is huge just gotta take down the shuckle and there we go we defeated the rock gym let's go Woo! i can't lie these rewards are very meh like, I've got, like, f almost three stacks of level balls now just from defeating these gyms. <laughs> All right, it's time for the next gym. I'm not too sure what this gym is, so let's head in with Baby Heatran. Okay, so it looks like we're against the Grass Gym now. So Heatran was definitely the right pick. Take down the Whimsicott with the Heat Wave. Another Heat Wave almost takes down the Rillaboom, but we do get taken down. That's fine, though. Let's go into Baby Rayquaza. We're going to hit the Dragon Dance. Now let's go for the Dragon's Ascent, which takes down the Kartana, takes down the Rillaboom, takes down the Ferrothorn, takes down the Celebi, and it takes down the Mega Venusaur. All I'm saying, Baby Rayquaza and Baby Xerneas, you guys are so overpowered. That is huge. All right, here we go. Let's head into the Ghost Type Gym. I'm going to lead off with my Baby Xerneas. Hopefully, I can hit a Geomancy. And I do get faked out. That's kind of annoying. Okay, let's go for the Moon Blast. We take it down. That's huge. Okay, we avoid the Will-O-Wisp. That's actually huge. Go for the Ice Beam on Delmise. Big damage, but we do get taken down. Let's go back into our baby Xerneas here. We'll go for the Geomancy, but it does take us down because we don't have the power up on. No, what am I doing? I'm throwing. Okay, baby Zashian. Let's go for the Play Rough. He avoids it. No. Okay, we do take it down there. Shadow Ball does get us, unfortunately. Let's go for the Dragon Dance. And then I think we just spam Dragon's Ascent as much as we possibly can. And there we go. We take down the ghost gym. Come on. Three master balls, another stack of level balls, blank TR, some XL candies, but most importantly, we did actually get three master balls. Okay, guys, it's time for the final gym leader, level 100. I'm not too sure what this gym leader is, so we're going to have to go into it blindly. I want to say by the, all the yellow around, it's probably the electric type gym. Yeah, okay. Wait, but there's a Sableye? I'm pretty certain Sableye is not an electric type. Um, That is very interesting. Okay. Uh, Well, we know it's going to go for the fake out, so let's go for a sword stance. I'm very confused right now. Why is there a mega Sableye in an electric gym? Interesting. Okay. 
Okay. Play Rough takes it down. Completely fine. We do get taken out by the Sludge Wave. It's a Gengar? I, is this not an electric type gym? It feels like it's just the same gym we just took on. What, what is going on? Go for the EQ. We do a little bit of damage. Not a lot, though. We do avoid the Power Whip. That's huge. Just keep on just hitting up. There we go. We do get taken down, which is fine. Let's go into Baby Kyogre. Hit the Ice Beam. Take that down. Go for an Origin Pulse. Okay, we do get a Shedinja coming, but it's fine because we have Ancient Power. So we take that down there. Go for the Origin Pulse. We take down the Gengar. Ice Beam freezes the Miss Magius. Now we just need to take down a Blacephalon. Let's go for the Ancient Power. And there we go. For some reason, it was the exact same gym leader as we, we just took on. But it does say in the chat here that it was the Electro Gym. So maybe that's just a glitch. With that, guys, we have taken down all eight of the gyms in the Smash MC server on the Cure Realm. Now it's time for the final challenge. We need to take on the ultimate legendary trainer who is going to have a full team of legendary Pokemon, which are the grown versions of the team that I will take into that battle to see if my baby Pokemon truly can beat their adult forms. Let's go find out. So in order to get through to the arena, I have to defeat all of the trainers inside of this ice cave. It looks like we have to start here and it's only a level 30 trainer, so this shouldn't be any issue for me. Although it looks like, oh no, I am still level 100. So let's just quickly blast through all of these guys real quick. And hopefully we will see the legendary trainer on the other side of this cave. Okay, we got a guy here. It doesn't look like he wants to fight. Long John Silver. Well, Lord is lighter than an average full grown adult. Okay, thank you for that fact, you weirdo. Um, okay, so another trainer here. Level 20. Okay, this is a bit easy, but I mean, we'll take it, I guess. This legendary trainer is meant to be very difficult, so I'm surprised that there's a bunch of, like, awful trainers that we have to fight in the first place. Okay, let's take on this guy as well. He's got a Mudkip and an Eevee. Okay, and a Star Raptor. Okay, now it's getting a bit better, and um, we've smashed it out of the park once again. Okay, I'm pretty Pretty sure this is the entrance through to the battle arena. And there it is. The legendary trainer that I need to defeat to become the ultimate baby legendary trainer. I need to take on this guy right here. He's going to have a full team of adult versions of all of my six Pokemon on my team. So this is going to be a very challenging battle. It's time to take on the legendary train uh, and he throws his pokemon at me how rude let's head into the battle he starts with a groudon and i start with a baby heatran now this is going to be a very interesting fight here let's go for the heat wave and see what damage we can do but he takes us out with an earthquake no i'm sorry baby heatran so as you can see at the top here groudon is level 95 and obviously, that is because it's baby legendaries versus legends. Now, the legendaries obviously have a lot better stats than the babies. So to make it a little bit more fair, we have changed the levels of the legendary trainer to give him five levels under me just to make it a little bit more balanced and see how this battle and to hopefully have a super intense battle. But of course, baby legends have to come out on top. So let's head into baby Kyogre here and let's go for an origin pulse. And there we go. All right, we take it down. That is huge. Next up is Giratina. But we're in the rain. No, we've, we missed the attack. And he goes for the destiny bond. No. Okay, we've got a switch here. Let's go to baby Giratina. And we're going to fight ruler of the underworld with ruler of the underworld he goes for the shadow force we're gonna counter him and go for the shadow force too okay he's a miss let's come on he misses shadow force because i'm away in the shadow force right now okay and we hit a huge shadow force let's go and he tries the destiny bond but it isn't gonna matter Let's take him out. Wait, no. Oh, no, I forgot it to get carries on to the next turn. No, baby Giratina, I'm so sorry. No. Oh, no. Okay, come on. We've lost two. We've taken down two. This is going to be a very... Oh, no. It's going to be so close. Baby Groudon, we've got to get a clutch up. Perfect matchup for me. Let's hit it with the Earthquake. This should take down the Heatran in one hit. And there we go. All right, we take down the Heatran for free there. Now, he doesn't know that I have this move, but let's go for our Solar Beam. Yo, 50% HP, but he does take down the Groudon. No. Okay, we need to fight water with water here. Let's go in to our baby Kyogre and let's hit it with an Origin Pulse. No, we don't take it down. Okay, that's fine. That's 
that's fine. We are going to take it down on this next turn, but we did lose a little bit of health there, which is not ideal. Okay, the Xerneas comes out. We have got the rain up right now. Come on, baby Kyogre. And we take down Xerneas. Now all that's left is baby Rayquaza. Let's switch into our baby Xerneas, predicting the dragon move. As we are, of course, a fairy type. Okay, he went for Dragon's Ascent instead. No, that's not ideal. Thunderbolt should do good damage. And we get the crit. And we take down the legendary trainer with our baby legendaries. We, of course, still have a baby Rayquaza, baby Kyogre and baby Xerneas coming in clutch and defeating the legendary trainer for us. Crowning baby legendary Pokemon as the ultimate legends. The Pokemon anime that we all know and love is coming to an end. And to commemorate that, I want to relive the entire journey from Generation 1 all the way up to Generation 8 as everyone's favorite Pokemon trainer, Ash Ketchum. Will I be able to catch every Pokemon Ash did and become the Pokemon Master? This is 100 Days as Ash Ketchum. Now, if anyone's seen the Pokemon anime, they will know that Ash and Pikachu are the most iconic duo in Pokemon. So, in order to start my Ash run, I have to have my starter Pokemon as Pikachu. Look at this boy. I'm so happy to have a Pikachu on my team. Level 30 as well. He's pretty strong already from the get-go. So, we'll see where this goes and we'll head out to catch our first Pokemon. Now, I think it's time to RTP out of the spawn and try and find our first Ash Pokemon. I want to catch each of Ash's teams in order. So by day 25, I want to have caught both the Generation 1 and Generation 2 team of Ash and take on two different gyms to move on to the next set of Generation Pokemon teams. So the first Pokemon I need to look for is, of course, a Pidgey and a Caterpie. Wait, hang on. There's a Pidgey. Let's go. Right, I just need to get into a battle with this thing. Wait, what? My, my Pokeballs aren't working. No, come back, Pidgey, please. Why? I'm so confused why they're not using them. Okay, let's just grab the Ultra Balls. No, he's flown too far. Oh, no. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this, Pidgey. No, come back. Please, Pidgey. No. Ah, no way. I mean, there's loads of Pidgeys up in the sky, though. So hopefully one will land and we'll be able to catch that one soon. Oh, hang on. There's a Pidgey. Come on, down you go. Hey, he's landed. Okay, we're going to sneak attack him. Ready? Let's go. Come on. Come on, it's the battle. No, I missed. <laughs> Come on, Pidgey. Hey, and there we go. We've now gotten into the battle with the Pidgey, and we will now have our second Pokemon to join Ash's team. Both a Pikachu and a Pidgey. Hey, there we go. Two Metapods. Let's catch one of these guys real quick. Come on, there's a Pokeball. Get in the ball, please, Metapod. Uh, he broke out. Okay, never mind. Well, I've just spotted a Caterpie over there. So I think the Caterpie is probably going to be a little bit easier to catch. So let's just go with this guy. Hey, let's go. Now we have ourselves a Caterpie, a Pidgey, and even our boy Pikachu. Now it's time to head out and try and find our next Pokemon. Now, for the next Pokemon I want to catch, I want to find myself a Bulbasaur. But the problem is, Bulbasaur only spawns during the daytime. So, as it's nighttime in the forest, I think it's time that we go do something else for a little while. So, let's head through to Warp Training. And we'll level all of our Pokemon up just to evolve them up to their final form. Ash did end up evolving both his Pidgey and his Caterpie all the way up to their final evolutions. So we'll level grind it until we eventually get ourselves a Pidgeot and a Butterfree. Oh, here we go. Metapod is evolving into a Butterfree. Let's go. That is one of the Pokemon we needed to evolve. Oh, and my Pidgey seems to be evolving into a Pidgeotto as well. Just going to evolve it into a Pidgeot and then we'll be back. And there we go. We finally have ourselves a Pidgeot and a Butterfree to add to our team. Honestly, our team is looking powerful now. I'm so excited to catch more of Ash's Pokemon. I think hopefully by now, we'll have enough time to head back over to the forest biome so we could try and find our Bulbasaur. Hey, and there we go. We finally, after a couple days of waiting found ourselves the Bulbasaur we have been looking for. Now all we gotta do is catch him and add him to the team. Honestly though, from generation one, Bulbasaur is one of my favorite Pokemon from Ash's team. Like, if you've seen the anime, you'll know how amazing he is when it comes to Professor Oak's lab. He's always there just stopping all the fighting and being like the dad of the group. He's absolutely hilarious. I love Bulbasaur. Now that we've caught ourselves a Bulbasaur, we need to continue RTPing as much as we can until eventually we find the next biome that I've been looking for. 
So, because we've got the Bulbasaur, I think it's only fitting that we now head out and try and find ourselves a Charmander. So, I'll be back when we finally find ourselves a mountainous biome. And there we go. We finally found the biome we were looking for. Now that we're in a mountainous biome, we just have to run around and hope that a Charmander eventually spawns. Wait. Yo, a Krabby. Wait, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that Ash does actually catch himself a Kingler at some point. So, let's catch this Krabby and add it to the team. Now, the next Pokemon that we are looking for is a Charmander. As obviously, in the anime, one of Ash's strongest Pokemon is his Charizard. Now, in order to find a Charmander, though, in Pixelmon, I need to be in a mountainous area, which is where I've managed to RTP to. Although, unfortunately, Charmander is an ultra-rare spawn. So, we're just gonna have to wait around in this mountain area until eventually we finally will get a Charmander to spawn. If I am correct, I think I just heard... That is right. I just heard the Charmander cry while I was AFKing. Finally, we've got the Charmander to spawn. Yes, come on. That is another one that we can tick off the list to join Ash's team. And there we go, guys. We have managed to catch ourselves the Charmander. Let's go. Oh, I'm so happy that I managed to catch this guy. We now have two of the Generation 1 starters. If you guys know Generation 1, you'll know, obviously, we've got these two. There is one boy left to catch, and that, of course, is Squirtle. Now, in order for the Squirtle to spawn, we need to find ourselves a beach biome. And with this, we only need it to be nighttime, and then we can get the Squirtle to spawn. Although, just like with the Charmander, it is a very rare spawn for Squirtle to spawn in the nighttime on the beach. But hopefully, we'll get lucky enough to find one. Yo, look at this, a belly ball. I've not actually seen one of these yet. This is one of the new Generation 9 Pokemon in Pixelmon, and he looked hilarious. Oh, it's such a shame that Ash never caught one of these. I would have loved to have caught this bad boy. <laughs> right, here we go. Come on. We found ourselves a beach biome. And at the moment, all I see here is a Blitbug, a Pumiyuku, a Volby. None of the Pokemon that Ash has caught. Oh! And there he is. Look at him. Oh, on his little island all on his own. Squirtle, come over here, my guy. Finally, we've got ourselves a Squirtle. That Squirtle spawned a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I was prepared to wait here for quite a few days. But we managed to get very lucky. And he spawned on the first night time that we were here. So, I mean, I'll take it. Hey, there we go. We have just captured ourselves a Squirtle, getting us all three Generation 1 starter Pokemon that Ash caught. We're getting pretty close now, guys. All we have to find now is ourselves a Primeape, a Muck, a Lapras, a Snorlax, and of course, the iconic 30 Tauros. That one's going to be a mission. But let's continue with catching more Pokemon. And since we're still around the mountainous area and around the ocean, I'm going to hang about here for a little while as there is two different Pokemon that I could possibly catch in the water and up in the hills. So if you do know which two Pokemon these are from Generation 1 that Ash has caught, make sure to comment it down below and let me know what you think that Pokemon is. Yo! Haha! <laughs> Another Generation 9 Pokemon. Look at this Wiggler. He looks so funny. Aww. I need to do a Generation 9 video. If you guys do want to see me use, like, maybe 100 days with only Generation 9 Pokemon, just make sure to let me know, and I can make that happen. But if not, we'll just have to see them in-game like this. We've got ourselves a Galarian Slowpoke. No. Oh, that's it. Yes! Finally! There's also a Corphish down there as well, but since Ash caught that in Generation 3, we can't catch that yet because in the first 25 days, we can only catch Generation 1 and Generation 2 Pokemon to join Ash's team. But luckily for us, Lapras is a Generation 1 Pokemon that Ash caught, so let's add it to the team. Now, in order to get the next Pokemon that we will need to join Ash's team, we need to head into this mountainous forest biome. Now, it's going to be a very rare spawn. I think probably the rarest one that we've had to look for yet. So we're going to be here for quite a while. So while I'm waiting around, I might do a little bit of training, see if I can evolve my Krabby into a Kingler and my Charmander up into a Charizard. So we'll be back when either we evolve them or we manage to find the Pokemon we're looking for. Hey, there we go. Our Charmander is now evolving into a Charmeleon. Let's go. And there it is. We've got ourselves a Charmeleon. We are now one step closer to getting ourselves a Charizard. 
And that Charizard is going to be one of the strongest members of our team. And there we go. We've also managed to get our Krabby to evolve all the way up into a Kingler. And perfect. Now that we have ourselves a Kingler as well, we are now one step closer to completing Ash's Generation 1 team. I'm so excited to get the rest of the Pokemon. Come on. Although I can't lie, I am absolutely dreading having to find those 30 Tauros. It's going to be an awful job. But the grind continues. We're still looking for that Pokemon that we needed to find in this area. So remember, if you do know exactly what it is, make sure to let me know in the comments. But if not, just keep waiting until we eventually find it. Hey, and there we go. We've also managed to get our Charmeleon up into a Charizard. Let's go. I'm so happy to have a Charizard. He's going to be such a powerhouse for our team. Him and Pikachu, I've got a feeling, are going to be the biggest carries for the Gen 1 team. Yes! Finally! Let's go! I've actually just managed to find it. Let's go! Oh, I was losing all hope for this one. I was honestly about to just leave and go find something else because this one was taking so long to find. If you guys commented Snorlax, then, well, congratulations because you got it right. Now we just got to add this guy to our team. Now that I only need three more different types of Pokemon to complete my Generation 1 for Ash's team, I need to head over to the jungle biome. Luckily, while I was RTPing, I actually did mark down a jungle. But the downside is it is 10,000 blocks away. So I'm going to have to hop on Charizard and head on over to the jungle biome. It took a couple days, but we finally made it. Now... The only Pokemon that we need to find here currently is a Mankey. If I'm not mistaken, they're actually quite common, so I should be able to find one quite easily. So I think... Oh, hang on. I think I see one down there, but we've just got to figure out how to get Charizard to go down because with the new mechanics, I don't actually know what the descent button is. So we might just have to float up here for a minute and we'll be back when we actually get to the Mankey. Now, with this added to the team, we only need to find ourselves a Muck and also the 30 Tauros. So we're closing in on completing the Gen 1 team. And there we go. We have captured the Mankey. Now it's time to head to a Swamp Biome. So now that we've finally made it into the Swamp Biome, which is where we need to be to catch ourselves a Muck. So I think all we got to do here is just continuously fish until eventually we finally get ourselves a Muck or a Grimer. Hey, and there we go. We have finally fished ourselves up a Grimer. Now all we got to do is catch it and evolve it up into a Muck. Now that we've got ourselves this Grimer and the Mankey, we just need to evolve these up into a Primeape and also into a Muck. And then all we will need left for Gen 1 for Ash's team is literally 30 Tauros, which is going to be a bit of a mission, but I know we'll get it done soon. So let's get these guys all leveled up and then we'll be back. We have finally evolved our Mankey up into a Primeape. Now all that's left to do is evolve this Grimer into a Muck, and then we can head out and find more Tauros. And there we go. Well... I can't actually see the Grimer evolving, but he is evolving up into a Muck. Now that we've finally got pretty much all of Ash's team from Generation 1, we just need to head out now and try and find ourselves as many Tauros as we possibly can. It's going to take a... What? Um... Yeah, helicopter, I guess. Um, yeah, I think now that we've got ourselves a Muck, we need to just head out and find as many Tauros as we possibly can. So let's get going. Wait, what? Yo, there's no way. I've just RTP'd and ended up finding a shiny Electrike. That's actually insane. No way. Unfortunately, though, it is not Generation 1, nor is it a Pokemon that Ash has caught. So, goodbye, shiny Electrike. Oh, no. Oh, I feel so bad for that, but it had to be done. I'm sorry, shiny Electrike. I'm sorry, man. You had to go. Hey, there we go. Tauros number one. We've actually managed to find a Tauros already. So I don't think we're going to have that much of an issue when it comes to finding all these Tauros. But I think we'll just continue catching them. And I will see you guys when we've caught 30 different Tauros. There we go. We've caught the Tauros. And I'm sorry if I got you guys, but there's no way I'm catching 30 Tauros. Since I've only got 100 days and I want to catch every single one of Ash's Pokemon... We're going to have to just limit it to one of that Pokemon because there's no way that I'm going to have enough time to find 30 Tauros and catch all of Ash's Pokemon at the same time. So we're just going to take the one and continue on. So now that we've gotten all of the Generation 1 Pokemon that Ash had caught in his journey, it's now time to create a team of six and level them to level 100 so we can take on our first gym leader. 
And there we go. Taking out this final Grim Snow has put our entire team up to level 100. Now it's time to go and take on our first gym. All right, then it is now time to try and take on the Fairy Gym. Now, this one's going to be a bit difficult because Fairy is a very strong type. But I believe in the guys. I reckon we've got this. So let's see how we do. Here we go. Come on. Okay, first we have got a Dedene. All right, then. Okay, let's use Heavy Slam. Come on, big damage. Nice, that's not too bad. Right, let's give him... Come on. Ooh. And it's going to take down the Snorlax. Okay. We've got to go into Pikachu here. And we're going to hit him with a Thunderbolt. Yes! That is huge. Okay, we know that this Marwell is going to go for a Sucker Punch. Because all Mega Marwells normally just run Sucker Punch. So if we switch into Charizard, we can set up our Sword Stances and hopefully sweep this Marwell. Ooh, it went for a Play Rough. Okay. Let's hit it with a Flamethrower. It did hit the Sucker Punch, but it's fine because we've taken it down. Nice. There goes the Dedenne. Come on. Now we've just got to take down this Fable. Ooh. Big damage from the Flamethrower. Oh, yes. Come on. Yes, Charizard. Come on, Flamethrower again. Yes. Charizard, come on. Yes. Charizard, you beast. And we have taken down the Fairy Gym. Let's go. Charizard has done an amazing job and swept that gym for us. Let's go. That was huge. And now that we've finally beaten the first gym with our Generation 1 team, just like in the anime, it's time to retire in all of my Generation 1 team. Obviously, we're keeping Pikachu on us, but the rest of the guys have to be sent back to Professor Oak's lab. So it's time to head on to a new box and head out to find a Generation 2 team for Ash's Pokemon. There it is! Yes! Finally, we have found ourselves a Cyndaquil. In the anime, Ash has got himself a Quilava, so all we got to do is evolve this thing once, and we'll have ourselves our next member of the team. Now, just like in Generation 1, Ash did catch all of the starter Pokemon in the Johto region, so we're going to have to look now for a Chikorita. Ash may not have caught a lot of Pokemon in Generation 2, but he did catch some good ones and some rare ones, just like the shiny Noctowl. Now, that is probably going to be the hardest one for us to find. So I'll just have to keep a lookout for a Hoot Hoot wherever I go. But the chances of it being shiny are going to be very low. So I'm not sure how easily I'm going to be able to find a shiny Noctowl. Oh, yes. There we go. Finally. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, he caught himself a shiny one. So we're going to catch ourselves a shiny one too. But he did not catch himself a shiny Chikorita, meaning this one will be usable and we can go ahead and catch the Chikorita. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I genuinely do not know what to say. There is no way that this has just happened to me again. What are the odds of that? I've just been AFKing here waiting for Nightfall because I want to get myself a Totodile. And I've looked up into the trees and I'm pretty certain I've just seen another shiny Pokemon. There's no way a shiny Squovet. What are the odds of these shinies right now? I'm finding so many. It's just such a shame that none of these shinies I've been able to actually catch. So just like the Electric, I'm so sorry, shiny Squovet, but you've got to go, my guy. Goodbye. And I finally managed to find the Pokemon I was looking for. You can see his head bobbing out of the water just there. It is, of course, the happy little crocodile, Totodile. Let's go. Meaning we now have all three of the Generation 2 starter Pokemon in Cyndaquil, Chikorita, and Totodile. Now all that's left to do is evolve our Chikorita, evolve our Cyndaquil, and we'll have three members of Ash's team already. And there we go. We have now fully evolved our Quilava and our Bayleaf to where they need to be to join Ash's team. We've already managed to get four of the six Pokemon that we're going to need to join the team. The only ones that we've got left now is Heracross, Noctowl, and Domphan. And then we've got all of the Pokemon from Gen 2 already. So let's waste no time and head back out to find more Pokemon. Hey, there we go. We found another easy one, a Fanfy. This one's a pretty common spawn, so it didn't take me very long to find. And there we go. We've caught ourselves a Fanfy, and we've just got to evolve it up into a Domphan. And there we go. We are now evolving our Fanfy into a Domphan. Although we can't actually see what's going on. But I promise you, he is actually evolving. There we go. Look at this beauty. I've loved Domphan so much. Look at him. He's awesome. Hey. Well, now that we've got ourselves a Domphan, I'm pretty certain there's only two more Pokemon that we actually need to find now. Which includes a Heracross, 
and the shiny knocked out. Now, whilst waiting for a Heracross to spawn, we've actually managed to come across a mega boss Heracross, which is even more rare than a normal Heracross, which it, it, it sucks, but it's also quite cool because obviously we want the Heracross, but instead we found a mega one. Obviously, we can't mega it because Ash doesn't mega his Heracross, but I figured we'd try and take this guy on and see what we can do. I'm not sure how well this is going to go, but we'll give it a go anyway. Come on. No way. No. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Pikachu, no. <laughs> I need to run. This thing is way too strong for me. Pikachu got one hit. Oh, and there we go. Yes. We've managed to get ourselves a Heracross. Let's go. We've managed to catch ourselves the Heracross, meaning all that's left is the shiny knocked out. And there it is. Oh, no. Please don't tell it me it just reached despawn. No, 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 no. Please. No way. There's no way that that... No! There's no way that that shiny hoo-hoo has just despawned on me. I've been here for so long. No! Oh, I can't believe that it just despawned right in front of my eyes. Oh, you don't understand how long it's been. After that first one despawned. Oh my. I've been waiting here for so long. There's so many hoo-hoos around. And finally... A shiny one has appeared. Oh, my. Well, now that we've got all of the Pokemon from Generation 2 for Ash's team, it's time to create the team, level them up to 100, and I'll be back when we're ready to take on the gym. Now, we finally have our entire team up to level 100. It's time to take on the Rock Gym. Okay, so he started off with Mega Aerodactyl. This is not good. But we're going to have to switch into Quilava, who is probably going to go down to this Mega because I need to keep my Heracross alive. Come on. Okay, that's decent damage. Come on. Please. Yes. Okay, the Mega Aerodactyl's down. That is huge for us. Cool, we did some good damage with Earthquake. That is perfect. All right. Heracross is sweeping right now. Yes. Heracross. Oh, what a legend. Oh, thank God. And we did it, guys. Let's go. Heracross, the MVP. Just like the last one, Charizard swept for me on the last one. And this time, we had Heracross to thank for our victory over the Rock Gym. And of course, because we beat the Rock Gym, it's time to retire our Generation 2 team. Honestly, these guys were so much fun to use. But it's now time to head into Generation 3. Now, to kickstart our Generation 3 Pokemon team, we're going to look for a Talo. Now, in order to find a Talo, I need to be waiting around in a forest biome during the daytime. It's quite a common spawn, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find. But we'll just wait around here until eventually a Talo pops up. Hey, there we go. We have found ourselves a Talo. We just got to try and attack it now. Okay, we've got to chase this Talo down. Come on, Talo. No, don't leave. I thought these would be more common, but I've only seen this first one in the past 10 minutes. So we need to try and catch this one. Please, Talo. Come on. Yes. We've managed to get into a battle with the little Talo. And the reason I wanted to catch myself a Talo first was purely because obviously it's a bird and it can fly around. And with this Pokemon, I'll be able to fly around and find loads more of the Pokemon that I'm going to need for Generation 3, which includes my favorite starter Pokemon, which is Trico. I can't wait to go find myself a Sceptile, but obviously jungle biomes are really, really rare. So I'm going to have to look for one and it might take quite a while. So Taylor, I think, was a pretty good pickup to start with because we just got to evolve it and then we can fly around on it. Now it's time to head over to the level grinder and evolve him up into a Swellow. Perfect. Now that we've evolved our Taylor into a Swellow, we should be able to ride this thing, jump on Swellow, and there we go. We are floating really high above it, but we can ride on our Swellow, which is the important part. So it's time to now go find ourselves a jungle biome. Hey, what are the chances of that? Let's go. So while I was traveling to find a jungle biome, we have actually just come across a core fish. And Corefish is one of Ash's Pokemon. He's quite a weak one, but he is also a super cute team member. Now, we've just got to find three more members of Ash's Gen 3 team, and then we can continue on to Generation 4. Ooh, we've got another raid then. I wonder what it is. Oh, a Mareep. Wait, there it is. Yes! We found ourselves a snow run. Let's go. And there we go. We've captured ourselves a snow run. Now, I'm pretty sure... 
In order to get ourselves a Galele, we actually need to have a male one of these, or it might just be a level up. I'm not actually too sure on how it works. I just know that you can get a Galele and a Frostlass, but we want to get ourselves a Galele. So we just got to level this guy up and hope that it does actually evolve into a Galele. But first, it's time to head into the jungle biome. Come on, where's his Trico? I mean, there's a Fomantis down there. That's not all we're looking for. What else have we got? A Mankey. What else have we got? So I'm pretty sure that the Trico spawns in the trees. So we've got to be looking up high for this Trico. Where is it? Yo, there it is. Yes, we found Trico. Let's go. Hey, I'm so happy about this one. Trico is my favorite starter Pokemon. I love him. Just look at this little legend. Let's go. Come on. I thought we were going to be spending so long in this biome. But we managed to get it quite quickly, so I'm pretty happy with that one. Now, as you can see, we have a team of five. There's only one more Pokemon that we need to catch, and that Pokemon is a Torkoal. It's going to be quite an easy one to catch, as Torkoals aren't too uncommon. But for this one, it's going to be a lot easier if we just head through to the Never. I don't think we're going to find him in this biome in particular, but we need to find him somehow. So I'll keep traveling around and I will get back to you guys once I eventually find a Torkoal. Oh, there we go. Luckily, we can get out of this hellhole because now we have found ourselves Torkoal. Let's go. Now that we have our entire team, it's time to head back to the level grinder and get our entire team leveled up to where they should be. And then we're going to take on the third gym. And just like that, we have managed to get our Glalie all the way up to level 100, along with the rest of our team. So we now have an entire team of Generation 3 Pokemon for Ash's team that are all level 100. Now, there's only one more thing to do, and that is to take on the third gym leader. Obviously, as you can see here, my entire team is leveled up. I've got all males here, other than our Glalie. But luckily, I was wrong. You didn't actually need to have a male snow run for it to evolve into Glalie. You just had to use level ups and then it would evolve to a Glalie. Turns out you actually need a Dawnstone to evolve it into a Frostlass. So we're all good there. Now that our entire team is leveled up to level 100, it's time to head to the movie learner and relearn a bunch of new moves on my Pokemon. As obviously they're not going to have the best moveset right now, but we're going to make it as good as possible to give us the best possible chance of defeating this gym. And here we go. It is now time to take on the ground gym. Let's see how we do. So they start with an Excadrill. So I think I'm just going to hit it here with a flame for us. See how much damage I can do. Ooh, Seismotone has come out. But I did get the burn, which is very important here. I think we just got to full send it and just hit it with a flamethrower, which is done perfectly again. One more flamethrower. And we've taken out the Seismotone. That's so huge. Come on. We have been hit by the Toxic, which is not good. And he's hit the Ice Beam. Oh, this isn't good. Okay, Sceptile comes out here. We've just got to hope that we outspeed and hit a huge Energy Ball. Okay, okay, that's good. Yes, Energy Ball's defeated it. Yes. We've taken out the Nido King. That is huge. Come on. Another Energy Ball. Yes. Come on, Sceptile. We just need to take out the Quagsire now, and I think we may have defeated the gym. Yes. Come on. We have defeated the Ground Gym. That is huge. This team was awesome. Let's go. Oh, I did not think we were going to defeat that gym so easily, but we actually managed to get through it, which was huge. And as always, now that we've used our generation three team, it's now time to retire them and head on to my favorite generation, generation four. Now, for my first Pokemon from gen four, I want to catch myself a Turtwig. But in order to find a Turtwig, I need to run around in a forest biome during the day. And it is an ultra rare spawn, so it's not like it's going to be an easy one to find. But I've got confidence if we just stick around in this biome for a little while, I am sure that we will be able to find the Turtwig that we need. Oh, there it is. Let's go. Finally, we have found the Turtwig that we were looking for. Let's go. Now that we found this Turtwig, there's only one more thing for us to do, and that is to catch this bad boy and evolve him all the way up into a Torterra. We've now caught ourselves a Turtwig. Now, a lot of the Pokemon from the Sinnoh region are all in the Extreme Hills biomes when it comes to Pixamon. So I think my next plan of action is going to be to find an Extreme Hills biome and wait around there until we find our next Pokemon, which could end up being a Chimchar or even a Starly, which will evolve up into a Staraptor. The other Pokemon that we're going to need are going to be found in the Swamp biome and most likely the Desert biome. So let's head out and see if we can find one of those biomes. Would you look at that? We've just found ourselves a Breezer while we were searching for different biomes. 
I completely forgot that Ash caught this Pokemon. So I'll be adding this one to my team. Now we're going to continue looking for the biomes that we wanted before. Now we've finally made it to the Extreme Hills biome. Now all we got to do is try and find a Chimchar and a Starly. So there's quite a few different bird Pokemon that we'll be able to find in Extreme Hills. But obviously, we're only looking for one in particular. And I'm pretty sure it's very common, so we shouldn't have too much of a hassle finding. We just need to catch one of these birds. Okay, this Starly right here is looking catchable. Come on. Let's go. No, come on. Come on, please. No, how have I not hit that? Okay, okay, okay. This should be it. This should be it. Easy hit. Please, no. Come on, Starly. Down you go. Oh, here we go. Yes. There was one just sat on the floor and we've managed to catch it. Let's go. Now, guys, I'll be honest with you. I am starting to lose hope on this Chimchar. I've been searching for days trying to find this guy. And I have not been able to find anything. Hang on a second. <gasps> yes. I thought I heard a little Chimchar cry and I was right. Let's go. Finally. Honestly, this has taken so long to find. For our next team member that we need to add, we need to find ourselves a Gligar. Although, Gligars only spawn in the evening and at the night time. So, we might be waiting around for a little while. So, I think I might just AFK here, or I might go look for the next biome that we need. But, again, the next biome that we need is a desert biome. And the Pokemon that we need there is a Gibble. Which, by chance, also has to spawn at night time. So, we're going to have to just keep waiting till it becomes night, and then go out and search for these Pokemon. Well, we may not have found ourselves a desert biome, but we did manage to get back to the swamp when it was nighttime. Meaning, hopefully, now we will find a Gligar. It's quite a common spawn, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find. I'm seeing Stunkies, I'm seeing Grimers. Nothing quite yet. There it is! Come on! Let's go. That is huge. We have finally found the Gligar we were looking for. Now, I gotta say, Gligar is one of my favorite Pokemon from Ash's team as it has such a cool way that it evolves. When Ash is in trouble, he's falling through this giant, like, canyon, I'm pretty sure. And as he's falling, Ash's Gligar flies down to try and save him. They throw him the Razor Fang, and he evolves into a Gliscor mid-air and saves Ash. Such a cool moment in the anime. Ooh, okay, okay. We've managed to find ourselves a Raid Den. And it's a five-star Rapid Ash Raid Den. So let's head into it with Pikachu and see what damage we can cause. Here we go. Right, I don't know how much damage this is going to do, but let's just hope it does a lot. That's a pretty good amount of damage. Come on now. Oh, we are destroying this Rapidash. Destroyed the Rapidash, beat the five-star raid then. And look at all the loot we managed to get as well, including an ability capsule. That is huge. If you don't know how ability capsules work, basically what they do is they can switch the abilities of Pokemon. So if you catch a Pokemon and it's got the worst ability possible, you can use this ability capsule and potentially get an even better ability if that Pokemon can get better abilities. So I will definitely be taking that. Unfortunately though, Ash does not catch himself a Rapidash at all, so we won't be catching the actual Pokemon itself though. Perfect, so now that we've found ourselves a desert biome, and it's also nighttime because it took me so long to find this biome, I now just have to search around until eventually I will end up finding a Gibble. Now, unfortunately, Ash's Gibble doesn't actually evolve. It stays as a little Gibble. And if you've seen Ash's Gibble from the anime, you'll know that it loves to just munch on everything it sees, which is absolutely hilarious. Unfortunately, though, the downside to this, though, because it doesn't evolve, I'm going to have to try and use a Gibble in the gym. Unless I just don't bring it. But I kind of want to bring the Gibble as it's quite an iconic Pokemon. Yo, look at this. A Gen 9 Orphworm. That is hilarious looking. Look at this thing, bro. <laughs> I love it. I really want to do a video on Gen 9 Pokemon because they're all just so cool. So I think we'll just wait until all the Gen 9 Pokemon are in. Then we will do a video on that. If you guys do want to see me do a video on Gen 9 Pokemon, make sure to let me know. Oh, there we go. Yes. Finally. That is what we call our good pal Gibble. Let's go. Now, before we do anything else, I do want to go and check what the next gym is. So obviously, first we had fairy type. Then we had, what was it? Rock type, I want to say. Then after that, we ended up having ground type. 
So we've got to check what the next gym is. And to me, this definitely looks like it's going to be a grass gym. So we're going to have to make sure that we have our most powerful Pokemon to take on the grass types. For example, our Starly turning into a Staraptor will be super effective and perfect for a grass type gym. Same with our Infernape with his fire type moves. But we'll be back and we will see exactly what team I've decided to bring. I've got to tell you guys, this team is extremely strong. I forgot how amazing Ash's Sinnoh team really is. We've got this fully evolved Torterra. We have Staraptor. We have Infernape. And we even have Gliscor. Not to mention our little pal Gibble as well. And of course, our ace Pikachu as always. But for the most part, we have so many fully evolved Mons, which is rare for a team of Ashes since every other team we've had We've had at least two Pokemon that aren't even fully evolved. But before we do anything, we need to head over to the Move Relearner, which we'll use to get a bunch of new moves and make our team as strong as possible before we take on the next gym. So here we have it, guys. We have our Generation 4 Ash team. It's time to take on the Grass Gym and see if we can defeat it. Okay, here we go. Let's take on the gym and let's see how we do. Okay, it did rapid spin, but that's fine because we hit the crunch again. Let's hit it with an Acrobatic. See what that does. Nice, that's some good damage. We're still alive. Okay, now we just need to take out Amoongus. Yes, come on. We have defeated the Grass Gym. That is what we are talking about. Let's go. Now that we've defeated the Grass Gym, we can finally move on to the next generation of Pokemon, which is Generation 5. Now, to start off our Generation 5 adventure, we are going to be catching this Pidav right here. As in the anime, Ash does end up getting himself an Unpheasant. So this pillar would be a perfect place to start. Now in Generation 5, Ash does catch a lot of different Pokemon. So we're going to have to pick wisely when it gets to the very end to decide which Pokemon we want to use. Although he does use every single starter Pokemon for Gen 5. So we're going to have to spend a little bit of time looking for those too. Now while we were waiting for an Oshawott to spawn in the beach area, or even just a Sandile to get ourselves a Crocodile, we did have something pretty amazing pop up just across the river from us. And that right there is a Snivy. Now, this is an ultra rare spawn, but it does spawn in the roof forest biome. Luckily, I am right next to that area while I'm searching for my other Pokemon. Now, this is an absolutely insane encounter to find already, but I'm happy I kept it out in the roof forest because this one would have taken a while. Unfortunately, though, like with some of Ash's other Pokemon, he does not actually evolve his Snivy. So we're going to have to keep this guy as a little Snivy for now. <laughs> But I wouldn't take it for granted, though, because Snivy in the anime is super powerful. Ash had a really strong Snivy, so I'm hoping that mine will be the same. Now it's time to get back to the hunt and try and find ourselves another Pokemon from Generation 5. Come on, we got a Trapinch, a Geodude, Skaroopy. Where's a Sandal at? Oh, yes! Two Sandals right next to each other. That is huge. Perfect. Well, we only need one of these guys, so let's go for this level 23 right here. Oh, finally. Luckily, though, Sandal isn't a very rare Pokemon, so it was quite an easy one for me to find off the bat. So we're going to have to wait around here until an Oshawott spawns. Then we can move on and catch a bunch more of Ash's Pokemon. I got a little bit bored of searching for my Oshawott, so I've decided to just go out and explore again, where I ended up finding this five-star raid den of a Yan Mega. Now, it is a flying type, but obviously my Pikachu is an electric type, so we should have no trouble wiping this out and getting some hopefully good loot. Same with a Thunderbolt. See how much that does? That's huge. We just need to take down his shields, and then we should be able to take out this Yan Mega. No issues at all. And there we go. We have defeated the Yan Mega boss and got ourselves some decent loot. An extra large XP candy. That's pretty good. A rare candy. And some more large XP candies down here too, along with the extra large. That is pretty good. Now, we won't be catching the Yan Mega though, because obviously in the anime, Ash does not catch himself a Yan Mega as much as I wish he would, because Yan Mega is such a cool Pokemon. Oh, there is an Ultra Space Wormhole right here next to this Wug Trio, which looks hilarious. But I think we'll go through there, just have a little look around, see what we can find. Yo, this place is completely changed. Yo, the Ultra Space is so cool. Another amazing feature, though, on the Smash MC server is that they've added new Paradox forms to the game, including Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise, a past and future version of each of those Pokemon. And they are super rare spawn. If you guys want to see me do some sort of video or challenge with the Paradox form Pokemon, make sure to let me know and I will make that happen. Ooh, and there we go. We've actually just found ourselves a Rock and Roller as well. 
which coincidentally is actually one of the Pokemon that we need for Generation 5. So let's catch that. Now, I think I'm going to stick around in this biome for a little while just to see if I can get one of those Paradox forms to spawn purely to show you guys how amazing they look. If you like what you see, then let me know in the comments down below and I will make a video catching all of the Paradox Pokemon. There's no way we've actually just managed to find the burning coat. Yo, look at how amazing this thing looks. I can't believe I actually managed to find one. Obviously, I'm going to catch it, but I won't be using it because obviously Ash doesn't get himself this amazing custom burning coat Paradox Charizard. But holy, does this thing look cool. I really want to do a some sort of video, maybe 100 days, maybe a 24-hour challenge, catching all of the Paradox Pokemon. So make sure to let me know if you guys want to see that. Now that is some good luck. I have literally just RTP'd out of the Ultra Space Desert and instantly a Swadloon has spawned on me after the RTP. Let's go. As obviously in the anime, Ash does have a Levani. So by getting the Swadloon, I can evolve it up and get myself a Levani. We now have an entire team of six of all of Ash's Generation 5 Pokemon team. We've only got a couple left to catch and then we'll be taking on the next gym leader. So I've come across a swamp biome and there is one Pokemon that I need to catch in the swamp biome, which does unfortunately involve fishing. So we're going to be here for a little while, just fishing away until we pick up the Pokemon that we need. Now, the Pokemon I'm looking for has a quite an iconic scene in the anime where Ash decides to only take in or only rely on this one Pokemon to take on the electric gym. And I'll tell you now, it doesn't quite go as well as he wanted it to go as using one Pokemon for a gym is never a good idea. And if you guys haven't guessed the Pokemon by now, it of course is Palpatode. And there we go. We've captured the Palpatode. Now let's move on to our next Gen 5 mod. Now I've decided to come back over to the rocky little beach area that I found before, as I still need to catch myself an Oshawa. So we're going to wait around here for a little while and hope that it spawns. So I'm just going to come and chill with you, Quagsire, even though... Um, ne never mind, never mind. We're just going to look for the Oshawa and then we'll be back. <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go. We found ourselves Oshawa. Let's go. Catching this Oshawa means we are one step closer to taking on the gym with our Generation 5 team. I'm pretty sure there's only two more Pokemon now that we're waiting to catch. And that is a Scraggy and a Tepig, which will evolve into a Pig Knight. Now, our last two Pokemon that we are looking for, obviously with the Tepic and the Scraggy, they both spawn in two different biomes, which include the Savannah biome for Tepic and the Mesa biome for Scraggy, which are two biomes that aren't too easy to come by. So we're going to have to continue to RTP until we eventually end up finding one of those biomes. Oh, I got excited then. I thought this was a Savannah biome, but no, it's just another desert biome. And just like that, we have found ourselves a Savannah biome. Now, I'm pretty certain that Tepig does actually spawn during the nighttime in Savannah biomes. So we might be able to get super lucky and find one straight away. So I'm wasting no time in trying to find that Tepig. No, I was so confident that that was a Tepig. No, we found a Cyndaquil, which is just as rare as Tepig. But obviously, we've already caught ourselves a Cyndaquil and used that back in Generation 2. All right, I guess we're going to have to continue looking around for that Tepig. Oh, wait, I think I've just seen it. Come on, please. Yes! Finally, a Tepig. That one took a little bit longer than I wanted it to. But the important part is we did find the Tepig. Now all we've got to do is find ourselves a Mesa biome and catch ourselves Scraggy. Now that is what I call crazy. We have traveled that far looking for a Mesa biome that we have quite literally hit the world border for the server. Oh dear, this is going to take a long time. I can already feel it. And as always, guys, while I'm mindlessly looking for this Mesa biome, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are enjoying the video. And if you want to see more videos like this, or even just 400 days of fusions at some point soon, make sure to let me know in the comments and like the video. Finally, oh my. Finally, we've found a Mesa biome. Oh my gosh, that took so long to find. I have never spent so long looking for a biome before. You can probably tell in my voice how relieved I am right now to have finally found this biome. Holy. So all we've got to do now is find ourselves a Scraggy and then we have all of our Generation 5 Pokemon for Ash's team. Finally. Come on. Yo. Look at the size of this Drapion. 
He's so small. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I wish I could catch Drapion. Drapion is such a cool Pokemon. And there we go. Yes. Finally, we have found the Scraggy that we were looking for. Come here, Scraggy. Join the team. And now we've caught all of the Pokemon that we are going to need for Ash's Generation 5 team. So let's head over to the level grinder, get all of our guys leveled to level 100, and then I will meet you guys back at the gym when we have finally made our Generation 5 team to take on the next gym leader. Now, once again, I do want to quickly check on which gym we are having next. So obviously we had Fairy, then we had Rock, then we had Ground, then we took on the Grass Gym. Now it looks like we have to take on the Electric Gym, which is with this weird block that's... Like, what's, what's going on? Ugh! I'm assuming this is electric, though, by all of the electric pieces. So I'm going to have to bring in my best ground-type team. I have now leveled my entire team up to level 100, and this is the team I've decided to go with. Obviously, I've got myself my Pikachu, as always. I've got a Pignite, a Palpitoad, a Crocodile, and also a Boulder and Lee Vanny. So I'm hoping to do some good things with this team and defeat the Electric Gym. So let's head inside and see how we do. Here we go. We are into the gym. And it looks like we're starting off with an Electrovire. So let's see what we do. Earthquake straight away. That is not good. Okay. Okay, let's see what we can do with a Levani. Maybe we can Grass Whistle and put it to sleep. What? I don't know how we're going to defeat this gym, guys. Okay, we're going to have to really think about this. With the fact that they've got Earthquake on their team, and they've got a Tapu Koko and a Zera Aura, this is going to be a challenge, guys. So we'll be back when we try and figure out a tactic and take the gym on once again. Now, I've come back with a different plan this time, giving my Pokemon all loads of different items. So I'm hoping that with these new held items, I'll be able to get the edge over the gym and defeat it once and for all. Okay, an Electros to start with. And now we'll hit him with a Leaf Blade. That's huge. Let's go. Okay. Yes! We took it out, though. That's huge. Okay. And it does hit me with a U-turn, but Lee Vanny has done bits there. That is huge. Let's try and hit it with a Head Smash. That's good. That's good. Let's hit it with an Earthquake. Come on. That's big damage. Come on, please. Yes! We have taken out the Electric Gym. Let's go. That was huge. All it took was us having to just change up our strategy a little bit, but we have managed to defeat the Electric Gym, which is huge. Now it's time to retire our Gen 5 team and head out to look for the Generation 6 team. And there we go. To kickstart off our Generation 6 team, we've already got a Fletchling right here. So let's see if we can get into a battle with it. The flying Pokemon are always such a pain to try and attack. Because they just fly around and I can't ever seem to hit them. All right, we've managed to get into a battle with a Fletchling. So all we got to do now is just catch this guy and then continue on with catching more Gen 6 Pokemon. And there we go. We've gotten ourselves a Fletchling to start off our Generation 6 team. Now, Ash's Gen 6 team is definitely arguably one of his most powerful teams. With a bunch of fully evolved Pokemon... And of course, he does get to the very final against Alan in the anime. It's one of, if not his strongest teams. So I'm very excited to catch this team and take on the next gym with it. Now, the next Pokemon that I'm looking for is a very strong fighting type Pokemon that Ash had on his team. And that Pokemon goes by the name of Harlucha. And I want to try and find Harlucha next, as after I find Harlucha, I then want to go and look for a Noivern. Now, Noivern hatches from an egg on Ash's team, and Harlucha is like a father figure to this Noivern. So I figured it would only be right that I go for the Harlucha first, and then I go for the Noivern. Just like that, we have found ourselves the Harlucha. Let's go. Look at this guy. He's such an awesome design for a Pokemon. There we go. We've caught ourselves a Harlucha. Look at this guy. Let's go. Perfect. So we've come across the right biome that we need, which is a Wooded Hills biome. So we just got to wait till nighttime now, and then hopefully we'll get ourselves a Noibat to spawn. There it is. Yes, come on. Oh, no, it's flying away. Okay, we need to be quick to try and catch up to this thing. Come on. Right, we're going to chase this thing down, and hopefully we're going to enter a battle with it. Finally, yes. Okay, it finally dropped down to the floor, and we've managed to enter a battle with the Noibat. And there we go. We have caught ourselves a Noibat. Let's go. Now we've got both Harlucha and Noibat. This is going to be a start of an amazing friendship. For our last two Pokemon, we have to revisit the Swamp Biome. 
Now, we were here before when we caught ourselves a Palpatode, but we're here again now because the last two Pokemon that we need to catch is Greninja and a Gudra. We're looking for a Battle Bond Greninja. Now, this means that in battle, this Greninja will be able to turn into Ash Greninja after it defeats a Pokemon. And it's going to be pretty difficult to get it to this point because Ash Greninja is a super, super rare spawn. Oh, there's no way. I just got baited so hard. Yep, it was a Mudkip. I've got a feeling this is going to be a long, long day. Yo, I didn't even notice that. I didn't even clock it. I was so prepared to get myself a Greninja. I didn't even realize there's a Goomy right here. Finally, we've got ourselves something from this swamp biome. And now we found this Goomy. All that we need to do is just wait around here until eventually we get the Greninja that we were looking for. Finally, let's go. We've managed to get a Greninja to spawn. Yes, we caught it. Okay, let's check it out. Please be Battle Bomb, please. No. Ah, no. There we go. Come on. There's another one. Please be the one we need. No. Torrent again. All right. It's going to take forever to catch all of these Greninjas. So I'm just going to get back when I finally have the Battle Bond Greninja. Okay, I've caught so many Greninjas now. You can see them all here. I'm just hoping that one of these is Battle Bond. No, no. Surely one of these has to be it. <gasps> yes! No way! We actually got it! Holy! But we did finally get the Battle Bond Greninja. Oh, it's been so long. <laughs> finally! Yes! Let's go. And now that we've got all six Pokemon that we need from Ash's team, it's time to take on the gyms once we level these guys up to level 100. Okay, let's go. Right, we've got our team to level 100. It's now time to take on the Dark Gym. I'm so excited to use this team, though. All six of them are just pure powerhouses, especially with Ash Greninja on my side. I'm sure I'll be able to take this gym down no problem at all. All right, here we go. They are starting off with a Grim Snarl, so we obviously have our Steel type in Iron Tail, so we should be able to take this down with a crit. That's big. Let's go. Next, he's pulled out a Greninja. Oh, now this is going to be powerful. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to defeat this thing, but let's just go for a Thunderbolt. Come on. He avoided the Hydro Pump, and I've hit the Thunderbolt and taken it out. Let's go. Yes, we did it. Let's go. We defeated the Dark Gym pretty easily with our team and we didn't even have to use pokemon like talonflame harlucha or even noiva and we only used three pokemon that is amazing let's go now to kickstart our generation 7 team we are going to start off by catching ourselves a rowlet rowlet is super iconic in the anime as ashes i'm pretty certain that ashes rowlet eats an everstone which means it will never ever be able to evolve which is so hilarious but it still manages to hold its own in the final battles. And there we go, we've caught it. Just as easy as that, we've now got our first Gen 7 Pokemon. And that is, of course, the iconic Rowlet. Let's go. Now, for our second Pokemon, I was going to go for a Lycanroc, but we accidentally RTP'd and ended up in a Bamboo Forest, which is where a Litten spawns. Now, Ash caught two of the starter Pokemon in Alola, which were Rowlet and, of course, Litten. Holy, look at this, a Biker Vault spawning. That is even rarer than a Litten. Vikavolt is definitely one of my favorite Generation 7 Pokemon. It's such a shame that Ash never caught one of these because I would have loved to use a Vikavolt. Wait. Yo! Let's go! Finally, a Litten has spawned. Let's go. To be honest, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Like, a couple days for an Ultra Rare spawn, I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's catch this Litten and continue catching more Pokemon. What a legend. He's definitely my favorite starter out of the three from Alola. Out of the three Pokemon that we've got left to catch from Ash's Gen 7 team, both of the other two are very, very difficult to find. Other than one, which is obviously the Lycan Rock that he has. So I'm in a wooded hills now, just waiting for a Rockruff to spawn. And hopefully I'll get one soon, since it's quite a common spawn. So we shouldn't be here too long. The last two Pokemon I've got to catch are a Naganadale and a Melmetal which both are extremely difficult to find. So we might be here a while. I'm not sure how easily I'm going to be able to find these last two Pokemon. But there we go. Let's go. Nice and easy. We found ourselves a Rockruff. Perfect. We caught the Rockruff. As easy as that. 
Now, these three were pretty easy to catch, but the last two, as I said before, are going to be so difficult. I think I'm going to head to Ultra Space and look for a Naganadale. Yo, look at that. No way. I'm pretty sure that is another one of the Paradox form Pokemon. Let's see if we can catch up to it just to have a little look at it. I'm not going to catch this one for now, but I do want to check it out. Let's go and see if we can get into a battle with it. That is so cool. The Iron Wing. I got to tell you guys, I do really want to make a video on these guys. So please uh, make sure to let me know in the comments if you want to see me using Paradox Pokemon only. Because they are so cool. Just look at this guy. I think I definitely prefer the Burning Coat to this one. But it nonetheless, it is still such a cool Pokemon. Finally, we've found ourselves in Ultra Jungle. This thing looks insane. It's absolutely massive. But luckily, we only need to find one Pokemon here. And that is the Poipal. So we'll wait around until one spawns. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take for this thing to spawn. And I'm not sure if it spawns on the trees or on the land. But we'll keep an eye out just running around until one eventually spawns. Um, I'm not sure what I did, but this, <laughs> this jungle just seems to be eating itself. I I'm so confused on what's happening. No, Mankey. <laughs> um... This whole thing is just destroying itself. I don't really understand what's happening right now. So I'll be honest with you guys. I have had zero luck in finding this Poipal. So I decided to kill two birds with one stone. I've basically gone on to the shop, bought myself a bunch of ores off of another player, and filled up an entire shulker box full of iron ore. I've then also placed out a bunch of furnaces too, and I'm just going to smell up a bunch of ores while waiting for this Poipal to spawn because hopefully I'll be able to get a Meltan to spawn at the same time while looking for a Poipal to spawn. Then if I can manage to get both, I'll have all the Pokemon I need for my Generation 7 team. And there we go. We've now got all of the furnaces full of iron ore. And hopefully we'll have a Meltan spawn. Or even better, we'll get a Poipal to spawn. So we'll be back when either one of the two ends up spawning. Wait. Oh, no way. Oh, finally, it's been so long. There's no way that's actually real. Yes! Finally, we've gotten the Meltan to spawn. No sign of Poipal yet, but we have got a Meltan. That is huge. And there we go. Finally, we have caught ourselves the Meltan. That is so huge. I'm so happy we managed to find this guy. So let's continue looking for that Poipal. I'm sure we're going to find it now. Come on. <gasps> Wait, there's no way. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's it. Finally! Yes! Oh, look at them both together. These two have taken so long to find. Finally! Oh my gosh. Holy. Let's go. Finally, we got this little Poipal. Yes! Oh, I am so relieved that we have these two now. I was so worried that we weren't even going to catch either of these. Let's go! Now, before we head over to the gyms, there is one thing that we have to differentiate to this team compared to all of the ones we've used before, and that is the ability to use Z-moves. Now, Ash's Pikachu in the anime has a Pikachium Z crystal, which basically allows Pikachu and Ash to use a move called a 1 million volt Thunderbolt. Now, I'm pretty sure that this item right here will allow me to use that with my Pikachu as well, making it even stronger than it was before. Obviously, with all the other gyms, we've never had like Z-Crystals or Mega Stones. Up until now, we're able to use this small gimmick, which is going to be amazing. And hopefully will give us the edge over the next gym. Okay, so I'm pretty sure by the looks of this, I'm assuming that this is a Steel Gym. Now, using Electric Type moves isn't really going to help me that much. But at least it'll give me an extra bit of power for when I am fighting it. I've also obviously got my Rowlet, my Incineroar, my Dusk Form Lycanroc, which is one of my favorite Pokemon. Obviously, I've got the Melmetal. And of course, I have Naganadale, which... Okay, hang on. There we go. Now he's not in the roof, but he is such a cool Pokemon. Look at this beast. Now, Ash only has it for a temporary amount of time, but he does have it when he's doing his final battle in the Alola League. So we're going to be using it in this battle too. Now, I think without further ado, let's jump into the gym battle and see how we fare against the steel type gym leader. Okay, here we go. Let's see how well we do against the steel gym. All right, so it starts with a clef key, which is completely fine because we can use a bulk up here. Now we hit it with a flare blitz. Now, I think here, let's hit an electro web. Flamethrower again. We get a crit on the Corb Knight and the burn. That's huge. 
And we take it down and defeat the Steel Gym. Let's go. And we got three Master Balls as well. That is huge. But luckily, we have taken down the Steel Gym with this amazing Gen 7 team. Now, all that's left is to take on the... Now, all that's left is to take on the 8th and final gym, which I'm pretty sure is a Fire-type gym. Which is quite ironic, as in the anime, the champion Leon is Ash's final battle. And he does have an epic fire type Pokemon, of course, being the G-Max Charizard. I'm so excited to get through this. We're almost there, guys. Let's go. Now that we're moving on to Generation 8, it's time that we unlock something new. Now, in the anime, and near the start, Ash figures out that his Pikachu can Gigantamax. Look at this chonky guy. He looks hilarious. Oh, look at his face. <laughs> well, as you can tell, I now have the ability to G-Max my Pikachu, making him 10 times stronger than before, so he'll be a lot more viable when it comes to the last gym. For my first Pokemon, I've decided that I'm going to head out and try and find myself a Ghastly. This is because, of course, in the anime, Ash does catch himself a Gengar, which is abandoned by its trainer. After it joins Ash's team, it eventually learns to Gigantamax and becomes super strong, especially in the fight against Marnie. So we've got to head out and try and find ourselves a Ghastly as fast as possible, and there it is. Let's go. There is the boy that we need. Let's get him in to the team. Now, for my next Pokemon, I am going to look for a Riolu. And this is because... Oh, there's no way. <laughs> I was just about to do a little chat about it. And all of a sudden, there is already one that has spawned. Let's go. So as I was saying, with Riolu, Ash actually gets his Riolu from an egg. But there are a couple other Pokemon that he also ends up getting from an egg in the anime throughout his journey. So I'm not actually going to be getting it through an egg. I'm just going to catch a normal one as otherwise, if we had to do it exactly how Ash caught it in the anime, it would take so much longer. But the next Pokemon that we want to catch, it involves doing stuff in the water, meaning we need to get ourselves a bunch of fossils. So I figured for this that it would be a great idea to grab ourselves out an old friend that we've used before in one of the old generations. That, of course, being our Lapras. Now, we didn't really use Lapras very often for the Generation 1 team. Well, I think it's time that we get her out now because we do need to head down into the ocean. Oh. Um, Lapras, are you okay? I guess our oh, Lapras is just really fat, maybe? I guess we're just going to go swimming? Never mind that. We will grab up our PC and we will head out to find all the fossils we can possibly get. Now, we have gone back and we have four different fossils, which I'm pretty sure two of these will end up being the correct ones we need. I wasn't 100% sure which ones we'd need, so I brought back one of each of the new fossils. So we're just going to wait for these to uncover themselves and get cleaned, and then we'll see which ones we need. Okay, perfect. So we have the fish fossil. Yes, that is exactly what we need. And the drake fossil. Both these two are the ones that we need, so we don't even need to worry about the bird or the dino, because all we need to do is put the fish fossil and the drake fossil in together to create this bad boy right here. Now let's just wait until it gets to 100%, and then we'll be back to see our new Pokemon. And just like that, we now have ourselves a Draco Vish. Look at this, let's go. I absolutely love the Draco Vish that Ash uses on his team in the anime. It's such a strong Pokemon, but it's also hilarious. There is now only two more Pokemon that we need to find to complete our Gen 8 team. Now, one of these Pokemon is, of course, Surfetched. I'm not really too sure when Surfetched spawns, so let's just quickly check that out. So if we type slash wiki Surfetched and then go on to spawning, you can see right here it spawns in a plains biome in the nighttime. It is also an ultra rare spawn, so this might take us a little while to find. Okay, there is no way this has just happened. A Necrozma has just spawned in the Dark Road Forest, and it was actually on me as well. There's no way. I could not believe this. What? I cannot believe it. Unfortunately for me, I can't really catch this thing. Oh, no. Okay, you know what? I'm going to catch this thing, and I'm just going to hold on to it, because Ash, of course, does not catch himself in a Necrozma. But at the end of the day, you can't really pass up on catching yourself in a Necrozma. I had to catch this guy. And look how amazing he looks. It's such a shame that Ash doesn't use one because it would be so cool to use. <laughs> Finally, yes! On the break of dawn, we have a Surfetch spawn. Finally. Oh, this took so long to find. 
but we've actually managed to get one now. We now only need one more Pokemon until we have Ash's entire team for the most recent Pokemon anime in Generation 8. Now, a lot of you probably know the last Pokemon that I need to look for, and also let me know if you did guess right once I finally find the Pokemon. And I'll get back to you guys when I finally find the Pokemon that we've been looking for. Okay, so we have found the biome that we need for this Pokemon. Now it's just a case of swimming around until eventually we find the Pokemon that we need. Unfortunately, though, the downside to finding this Pokemon is it's an ultra rare spawn, meaning it's not going to spawn very frequently. So we're going to have to keep our eye out and hope that we get lucky enough for one to spawn on us soon. And then we still need to take on the champion Leon to make sure that we are the ultimate trainer, just like Ash is in the anime. And there we go. Finally, we have found the Pokemon. And of course, that is going to be a Dragonite. Now, if you guys did guess correctly, make sure to let me know in the comments. But for now, we just got to catch this guy, get him leveled up, and then take on the next gym. Now, the final thing that we need to do for this team is, of course, to get our Lucario to Mega Evolve. Now, in order to do this, I can't just go and buy some ordinary Mega Stone. I need to defeat a Mega Lucario boss. And this is quite a rare spawn for me to find. So I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time in the Extreme Hills biome, waiting for this boss to spawn, and then take it on and defeat it. And then be able to take on the eighth and final gym leader. Yo! Oh, I thought that that just despawned on me. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I thought that it just despawned on me. I was going to be so sad. Finally, we found the mega boss Lucario. Come on! Now, all that's left to do is take this guy on and hopefully be able to defeat him in battle. Yes! Come on! We have defeated the Mega Boss Lucario, getting us a Fusion Shard, 7,500 coins, a Normalium Z, an XP Candy Extra Large, and most importantly, a Lucario Knight, which we can now use to Mega Evolve our Lucario. So let's give it to him real quick. There you go, buddy. Now it's time to head into the eighth and final gym. A fire type gym leader. I'm sure I'll be able to get it done. I've got a pretty strong team and I'm very confident in every single one of them. Let's take it on and hopefully defeat it. Here we go. We're back into the battle and we are against the Heatran here. Come on. Okay, we just need to try and hit one more move. We'll mega evolve and we'll go for a stone edge. Come on. We have defeated the fire gym. And now that we've beaten the fire gym with our original pal Pikachu with Gengar, with our Mega Lucario, Dracovish, Surfetched, and of course, Dragonite. Now that we've used this entire team to take down the final gym, it is now time for the last challenge. The final hurdle in our step to becoming Ash. We need to defeat the champion Leon. Let's head over and find Champion Leon to take him on and become the ultimate champion. Okay, guys, I think I have found Champion Leon. I'm approaching his arena, and there he is. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. We're about to have a fight with Champion Leon. Look at him. Okay, here we go. Let's head into the battle and see what we can do. Oh, okay, we're into the battle with Champion Leon. Everything has come down to this moment. Come on. Okay, we're starting with our Dragonite. Our Surfetch is just sat there on the sidelines, just cheering us along. Let's go for an Aqua. Nice, that's some good damage. Let's hit it with a Dragon Tail. It does go for the Sucker Punch, but that's fine. We've taken it out. That's huge. Okay, Mr. Rhyme now comes out. Okay. Um, let's hit a Rain Dance. Set up. Oh, but it does go for the Freeze Strike. That is not good. Okay. Hit it with an Aqua Tail in the rain. That should do some big damage. Come on. Oh, no, that's not good. Please, Dragonite, wake up. No way. I reckon we go to here. We Mega Evolve Lucario, and we go for an extreme speed. Yes. Okay, we've taken down the Mr. Rhyme with Mega Lucario. This is huge. Come on. Yes. Okay, we did some damage. And it went for a Boom Burst, but that doesn't affect me. Yes. Took a punch again. No, it noble roared. Okay, that's good damage. And we take down the Dragapult. Let's go. Okay, now this is going to be a difficult one. The G-Max Charizard. No. Okay, it takes us down there. Surfetched. Okay. 
I think it's poetic that we have to go into Pikachu here. And we have to go for 1 million volt Thunderbolt. Everything has led to this one moment right here. All the gyms, all the Pokemon that we caught. Pikachu, it's all down to you, buddy. Come on. Much bigger than a Thunderbolt. One million volt Thunderbolt. Yes. We took down the G-Max Charizard and defeated the champion Leon. And with that, defeating Leon means we have now completed our 100 days as Ash Ketchum and have become the Pokemon Master. Let's go. Today, I'm going to be spending 100 days in a legendary only Pixabon. I have a few goals in mind for this challenge. Of course, to get myself a legendary fusion Pokemon, get myself a shiny legendary, and get a full team of six legendary Pokemon to level 100. And finally, I have to try and take on and defeat the legendary Cyrood boss trainer. Now, will I be able to complete all these goals by the end of this 100 days? Make sure to stay tuned to find out. And here we are. We have loaded into the server with our shiny Rayquaza. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to use this guy. It's going to be an epic 100 days. Now, I think to start off this 100 days on the new Groudon server, I'm going to head around and try and find all of the treasure chests. There's 25 of them around the spawn area, and you get a bunch of really cool rewards from opening them, including lucky blocks. Now, if we can find all of them, I'm pretty sure we will get an uncommon lucky block, which has a chance to upgrade to a rare, getting us a legendary Pokemon to join our Rayquaza. Now, whilst we're looking for the treasure chests, I have now started a live streaming on the channel. And with that, I've decided for this series, I'm going to name my Pokemon after people that have been in my live streams. So for this Rayquaza, we are going to name him Cyan after a player who has been in pretty much all of my live streams to the date of when I'm recording this video video so shout out to you cyan thank you for all of your support sir there we go there is number three <laughs> these are taking forever to find guys i cannot lie this is crazy finally we have found treasure chest at number four which is a random pokemon or a choreo okay i'll be honest guys i'm probably just gonna cut back to when i've actually found if not all of them most of them okay there we go so we've managed to get up to 11 treasure chests which has given us uncommon lucky blocks and common lucky blocks a couple red candy some random pokemon lucky egg and an orb now i'm pretty sure that this is all the lucky blocks that we get so i don't think that there's any point continuing with the treasure chest because they're taking so long to find and we got all the lucky blocks that we came for all right here we go we have rtp'd out into a forest biome the perfect place to open up our uncommon lucky block please be an upgrade come on yo yes come on let's go haha <laughs> hey we got ourselves a rare lucky block upgrade Whew. okay let's open up our free commons real quick and then we will open up our rare lucky block rip okay well none of these we can use which is not an upgrade so we're gonna leave those there okay it's time to open up our rare lucky block please give us a good pokemon three two one boom oh okay let's go let's grab the palkia not too bad to be honest not too bad we caught the palkia a hey, perfect there we go we now have two legendary pokemon to kickstart this 100 days obviously we got ourselves a shiny rayquaza and we have our palkia now the next person that i'm going to be naming the palkia after is of course someone that is always in my live streams which goes by the name of Khaled there we go sir Cyan and Khaled both of my moderators there we go at the moment as of recording this video we do a bunch of live streams all the time and they're always so much fun with everyone hanging out so make sure to tune in if you ever see those on your subscription list just pop in say hello and i'm sure you will have an amazing time now i think the next thing that we want to do is try and head over to ultra space now i'm counting ultra beast as legendary pokemon as well as mythical Pokemon. So if we can get ourselves an Ultra Beast, that would be pretty huge when it comes to completing our legendary team. Now, the next thing I think we should do, since we got given an orb, is probably to fill up this orb so we can get ourselves a Generation 1 bird. So if we go onto the slash shop, 
we should be able to buy evolutionary items. And for this video, I want to get myself a Zapdos. So let's buy ourselves a Thunderstone and we're going to combine them both together to create the Orb of Static Souls. I think the best thing for us to do now is head on to the GTS, which of course shows off a couple legendary Pokemon, including Ho-Oh and Lugia for 40k and 35k. We also have a Mew on here for 60k. We have Arceus, 110, and Type Null for 150k. Now, I think that's going to be the best way for us to get legendary Pokemon, just saving up money, because currently we have 15k right now, so we're not even that far off. We also obviously have our Orb of Static Souls, which we're going to start filling up very soon. And we also have the Battle Pass. As you can see, there's, I've already claimed these three things here, but there's also common lucky blocks. We've got uncommon and even more common lucky blocks throughout the battle pass. Now, I think it's going to be very important that we get as many lucky blocks as possible because they're going to be our best friends when it comes to getting a legendary Pokemon. And it looks like a random tournament has just started. So let's go ahead and join that tournament. Perfect. It's going to give us a random team of Pokemon and we just need to do as well as we possibly can. And if we can win the tournament, we get ourselves a bunch of really cool loot, which hopefully will include legendary Pokemon. But for now, let's head back over to the crates where we can open up our vote crates. So, I mean, we got some meh, not very good stuff, I'll be honest. But one thing we did do is get a bunch of rare candies, which we can put into our shiny Rayquaza. Now, I think what we're going to do is open up a bunch of random Pokemon papers that we were given. So let's do one, two, three, and four. Your guys, Shedinja, Poliwag, and Nicky. Unfortunately, nothing that is going to help us out so far. And we've been teleported by Yeek into the ultra space thank you very much sir i really appreciate that awesome now what we can do is head out and find ourselves an ultra beast pokemon now they do spawn very commonly out here so hopefully we'll be able to find something oh okay so we are in to the tournament here are we go i don't know who we want to start with here really i guess we're gonna start with our crawdon i'm not really too sure so let's do that two hours later yes we take him down with the poison jab let's go ggs there we go and a pheromosa has just spawned in the ultra desert surely it's on me please be on me bruh let's look around is it on me i don't think it is unfortunately but as you can see in here we have a bunch of ultra space loots now i'm gonna look around for these as well because you can have a chance of getting the arceus plates from them which means that we can get Arceus. If we can get every single Arceus plate, which really shouldn't be too difficult. So it looks like the next rounds of the tournament are about to start. I'm pretty happy with the team that we've got right now, so I'm not going to change anything about it. But unfortunately, we've been hunting for these Arceus plates, and currently we've just found a bunch of rubbish. We're going to keep looking. Hopefully, we can get an Ultra Beast to spawn. Hopefully, we can get some Arceus plates, and hopefully, we can win the tournament. There's a lot of hopefullys there. But I am very optimistic with the team that I've got. So fingers crossed I can do well. Okay, we're in. Let's go ahead and start off with our Vesper Queen right here. Against VVWZ. Good luck, sir. A few minutes later. We take down the next person. There we go. Let's go. GG's to you, sir. Let's continue hunting and wait for our next tournament round. I just realized as well, we probably should be defeating as many pokemon as we can because we do have a static orb and we have not touched a single pokemon yet and we are in to our next round on the tournament let's go ahead and select up our team same as normal we're against tom plays game so good luck sir and we take him down ggs sir Whew, i don't know how we survived that one i fully thought we were getting taken down and just like that we get ourselves a flame plate that is huge okay we're waiting to go into the next level of the tournament guys I'm pretty sure we're quite close to the very end now. Let's just see what comes next. Okay, we are against e Yeek. Here we go. I'm pretty sure this guy's really good. So we're going to have to play this very, very well here. And we get taken down. GG's. <laughs> I could not take down any of his team. That is a rip. And we've done a little bit of grinding. And we now have 33,000 Poke Dollars from just selling a bunch of items that we've been getting through the ultra space loot and we have this many plates we have one two three four five six seven eight of the plates i don't know how many we need in total but we have got a decent amount so i think our next plan of action will be to continue looking around for stuff but also we're going to start taking out as many pokemon as we possibly can 
to try and fill up this orb. And hopefully, if we can take out a bunch of these Pokemon, we'll be able to get a bunch of levels for our Rayquaza as well. So another good way for me to make a bit of money in order to buy new legendaries is to do slash bingo. Now on here, you can catch all of the different Pokemon that are listed and you'll get 250 Poke Dollars per catch. Now I just caught a Gibble, which gave me 250 Poke Dollars and we are now so, so close to getting 40k so that we can buy ourselves that Lugia that is on the market right now. Yeah, we can get rid of a lucky egg. And boom, 40k. Let's go on the GTS. No way the Lugia got bought. Oh, no. And the Ho-Oh. No. <laughs> As you can probably imagine, I'm quite um, surprised by that. That really sucks. Wow. Oh, no. That's a shame. I guess we're just going to continue then looking around in the Ultra Space biome. See if we can find anything else. And if we can maybe catch a legendary, that would be really cool. Okay. Um... <laughs> Um, we just defeated a full star raid, and it, which was a camera up, and we got a master ball. What? Um, okay. Wishing peace to master ball. Um, yeah. That. Oh. Hmm. Um. <laughs> I don't really know what to say about that. That's crazy. What? Okay. Awesome. So we managed to complete our common scroll, which is right here. So let's go ahead, right click it, and we got ourselves. 1,000 Poké Dollars, 8 Rare Candies, and 5 Medium XP Candies, which is not actually that bad. So let's just spam all of these into our Rayquaza. There we go. Another thing that I realized is, of course, that we're on the Groudon server. Now, because the Groudon server just got reset, that, of course, was where our Fusion series was, which went up to 500 Days Fusions. If you haven't already checked out, make sure to have a look on the channel and go give it a like and watch through all of those series because that fusion series made my channel so much bigger and i am forever grateful for that series it was amazing times we also made a short if you guys did watch it i asked you guys to let me know which fusion pokemon you wanted me to keep and i decided to go with a certain pokemon that was a staple for our first 100 days in fusion pokemon it was the thumbnail that absolutely blew up so if you know which one it is, let me know in the comment section. We're going to go ahead and claim our Pokemon from the Pokemon Bank. So I decided not to do another Fusion series, but maybe instead we do a Legendary series. So if we open up the Poke Bank, we of course took Lucatrez. So let's go ahead and let's take him out of the Poke Bank. We now have our Fusion Pokemon Lucatrez from our first 100 days in Minecraft Pixelmon Fusions to join our team on our legendary journey that we've got going on right now our team is looking pretty insane already which is crazy okay so <laughs> i was just afking around here real quick while i was munching on some food and i was like oh my god it's a custom like it's a custom umbreon i thought it was a shiny but it's pink and i looked at it and it's like a custom textured umbreon which looks awesome so we're gonna go ahead and try and catch this guy it's not gonna be something that we can use but we're still gonna take it anyway and if we also have a little look on our bingo card as well we are very close to getting an entire diagonal line we just need to find a smeargle so if we can figure out where smeargle spawns and try and find that that would be awesome so it looks like it spawns in the badlands so we need to figure out how we can get to the badlands so let's rtp out of him okay we have just come across a boss battle toy though so we're gonna try and take that on real quick meteor mash pretty good damage it hits the confusion that's fine meteor mash again with the lucatres and we got the attack boost that's huge meteor mash again and boom we take down the boss battle toy we get ourselves a good rod and some never melt ice xp candy and some pokey dollars that's lovely okay so i was just traveling a little bit around and i ended up finding this really cool looking church structure that hasn't actually been claimed yet and i'm thinking maybe we turn this place into our like legendary base like i think it looks so cool we also got a little area through here as well we actually need to open it up have a couple chests in here very very cool nice well let me just put that back there there we go i think we're gonna go ahead and claim this area as it's a really cool looking area and it means that we don't have to build a base and because i'm super lazy this is great so we're doing it we'll claim like up to here maybe okay okay so that's as much as we can claim right now so we've got a decent amount of it we haven't got all of it yet though uh but it should be fine i don't think that anyone is going to come on in and try and take stuff so hopefully that will be okay let's set up some chests down in here and make it into a little base and then i think for now we're just gonna make a little chest area over here okay barrel will have 
all of our Arceus plates in so that we can keep those all safe. We've got ourselves a little area now, and because I'm so lazy and don't want to build a base, this is going to be the base for now. There's a bunch of plates on the GTS right now. I just want to check which ones are on there. There's the Splash, Icicle, and Meadow. We don't have any of those, so they would be worth buying. The Insect, Stone, and Pixie. All of these cost a lot. Maybe we won't buy them. Uh, I think it's probably best if we just try and find them ourselves, because that is crazy. And I ain't trying to spend that much money on just a couple plates. Definitely not. Well, okay, so we've just come across a village that has not been looted. I guess this is the perks of joining a new server. Yo, this is amazing. I'm thinking, actually, you know what? Let's just grab everything because we can just sell it. We can sell all of this stuff. Okay, there's way too much stuff here for me to actually carry. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly sell a bunch of stuff. I want to steal this and this and this. There we go. I'm just going to steal it all. So I didn't want to say, I come in this this place, right, which is the daycare, and I look in one of the chests that they've got, and they've just got a bunch of buckets of lava. I don't really know what that's about. And they have skulls. I'm like, what? What? What is what? What? Why do you guys need buckets of lavas and skulls if you're meant to be breeders? Interesting. Well, I'm stealing this for that, and I'm stealing this. Oh, we can get them. Yay. Turtle eggs. Woohoo. Yay. <laughs> I get so sidetracked and I start doing other things. I'm pretty sure we were meant to be BRTPing into a Mesa biome to try and find a Smeagol, right? Yo, so I just caught myself another Pokemon. I caught a Machop and it's completed a part of the bingo, which gave me $5,000 and a, a Mega Shard, which I'm pretty sure we can get ourselves a Red Orb, which is used to Primal Groudon, which would be so, so cool. I don't know how we're meant to get more of those, though, so that might be very difficult. Got a Spiro, a Roly Coley, a Baldor. Come on. Hey, finally, we found a Smeagol. Let's go ahead and catch this guy real quick. Hey, there we go. Oh, okay. So it doesn't look like the bingo updated. Oh, I guess you can only get one line, which means now we need to fill the entire thing in order to get a prize. Okay, that's fine. We can get that done. So what do we need to find next? Let's head out and see if we can get as much of this done. We're just going to speed run this and see how fast we can get this bingo done. I don't know how this has just happened, but as you can see in the chat, Azashian has just spawned in the swamp biome and it's actually on me. That is crazy. Like what? Um, well, I mean, I guess we're going to go ahead and catch this. Like what? I didn't think he could spawn in the swamp. Like, what? Let's grab him out of the PC. And there we go. And there we go. We now have a Zashin. That is huge. Come on. After catching the Zashin, we are so, so close to having every single Pokemon that we need for our bingo. Problem is, we still need an Emolga. Now, in order to get ourselves an Emolga, we need to find a jungle biome. And I've tried BRTPing to one so many times now, but I cannot seem to find a jungle. I've asked around in chat, but nobody's seen one. But we do have our common scroll to open up. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Ooh, okay. So we got 1,000 Poké Dollars. We got ourselves two random Pokemon papers. So let's go ahead and open those. Electrode and a Machop. All we need to do now is find ourselves a jungle. And there we go. I just heard it flying around. There it is. We have got a Amolga. So let's go ahead and try and get into a battle with this thing. There we go. Okay, we completed our bingo. Let's see what we got. 20,000 Poké Dollars and two Fusion Shards. Okay. I mean, that puts us at 73k, which is amazing. Uh, was it worth it? Mm, maybe. I'm not really too sure. So throughout this 100 days, I don't want to do what I did last time and have a the base that is nowhere near you guys so as you can see right here we have bite bandit so shout out to you my guy he's always in all of our streams as well such an amazing guy and he's on the server right now and wanted to teleport over so that he could build a base nearby so if you do want to join us and build a base here since we're going to be doing quite a few hundred days on this server make sure to just tp to me if you see me on the server and you can make a base here. I might try and get a warp set up here as well for the video so that you guys can head on over and TP in. We can make this into a massive town, hopefully with having this giant abandoned church in the middle, which is obviously my house. Because we completed our bingo, we got a bunch of levels in our battle pass. So what we're going to do is claim common lucky block, 32 quick balls, and a random dark Pokemon. So let's see what it is. A Lipard. Okay. Let's put that away. There we go. And we also got the common lucky block. Let's open it up. Hand Sage. Hmm. 
Pan Sage. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to head over to the warp training area because. So I want to take on these trainers and hopefully I can. Well, I'm kind of hoping that if I can take them out, it will get XP. And I'm wondering if it will give me battle points as well. Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So we can just keep training on these guys and also get a bunch of battle points at the same time. And there we go. We have leveled up all of our Pokemon to level 100. And we got ourselves a couple random Pokemon papers. So let's open them up real quick. We've got Carbink, Cubone, Tarantrum, and Venusaur. Okay. None of those really that we can use. But that's still pretty cool to see. We should hopefully have a bunch more to claim. Now that is huge. Let's go ahead and grab all these up. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. So we have a bunch of new stuff. And we get another orb. We got a choice scarf, some rare candies, a specific Pokemon, and a Thunderstone, and two lucky blocks. Now, with this specific Pokemon paper, we could go ahead and claim it, but I'm thinking we keep hold of it just in case we want to make ourselves a fusion Pokemon. So let's hold on to that for now, and maybe we'll claim that at a later date. But for now, let's head back home and let's open up our lucky blocks. So I think we're going to do the common one first. And let's see what we get. Come on. Okay, let's move you out of the way. There we go. Let's just, you know what? No, you can get, you know what? Actually, no, you, you, you're gone. You're gone. There you go. Bye-bye. Deleted. Don't be a stinker. Yes, come on. We got the rare lucky block upgrade. Oh my gosh. Now that we've got this, it means that we will get a guaranteed legendary Pokemon. Now the question is, can we get this to upgrade again into a shiny legendary? Could you imagine that would be insane? Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and open up our rare lucky block. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Yo, no way. No way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, actually upgraded. Oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? We get an, we get a shiny legendary. Here we go, baby. Come on. Three, two, one one boom Ooh. okay i mean it's a bit of an l <sighs> it's a bit of an l tapu lele man that could have been so much better we have now got two shiny legendary pokemon in shiny rayquaza and tapu lele both of them are both black shinies that is so cool to see now i'm gonna name my tapu lele I'm going to go with a player who was on the server named Library. There we go. That is named after you, sir. Thank you for jumping in the streams. I really appreciate it, man. I'm trying to remember all these off the top of my head. So it is quite difficult to remember them through memory, but I'm pretty sure that was it. But with that, guys, we now have five legendary Pokemon. We are so close to having a full team of six in this 100 days. I am so excited. I've just logged back onto the server and I've noticed a really big build over here so i wanted to go and check it out inside of it is a huge like pyramid type structure created by a bite bandit so shout out to you my guy thank you for building this there's also a dirt hut in here cyan's hobbit hole um uh, mm, cool Ooh, cool um lovely the hobbit hole <laughs> but i mean nonetheless it's still a very very cool area now that we have almost a full team of six legendary Pokemon, I think it's time to fully fill up our Orb of Static Souls. Eventually. And there we go. We've taken out our final Hoot Hoot and filled up our entire Orb of Static Souls. I think it's time that we head on over to the Shrine area so that we can get ourselves a legendary Zapdos. We have to try catch this thing without a Master Ball. So it's going to be an interesting one. But we're going to go for it. There we go. Zapdos has been summoned. We're going to go for the quick ball straight away. Hopefully, we can catch it straight away. Would that be amazing? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's switch into our Tapu Lele. I'm going to go for Nature's Madness because I'm pretty sure that does half HP no matter what. Now, will it do half again? Yes, it does. There we go. Half again. Get it into red. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and just spam the Ultra Balls. Hopefully we can catch this guy pretty quickly. We need to catch Zapdos. Come on. And there we go. Zapdos has been caught. Good luck to you, sir. I don't know how to pronounce your name. So good luck with your Zapdos too. And now we finally have a full team of legendary Pokemon. So we can complete another challenge of the 100 days. So we can tick that one off. There we go. Now with this, we could go ahead and 
get our Pokemon all leveled up to 100, or we could go out searching for another legendary Pokemon, which of course is what the 100 days is about. So let's go ahead and try and find our next legendary Pokemon. Now, of course, we do have a another orb, which we can go ahead and let's put it with Moltres. There we go. So we now have our orb of fiery cells that we can fill up passively over the rest of the 100 days so that we can get a Moltres near the end as well. Now, let's check how many plates we have, because I'm pretty sure we've been collecting Arceus plates, if I'm correct. Yes. So I think what I'm going to do is head into the Ultra Space and see if I can find any more of the Arceus plates. So we still need like nine more, but to be honest, that's not too bad. So we're going to have a little search around, see what we can find, and hopefully we can come across a legendary Pokemon, maybe. Maybe an Ultra Beast would be cool. I've also just had a player under the name of Karat1000 who has TP'd over to me Says he's a big fan. So uh, there we go, sir. Shout out to you, my guy. I appreciate the support. So currently, we haven't managed to find any more Arceus plays. We found a bunch more loot that we've had to keep on teleporting back home. But on the bright side, I have found a new Pokemon that I want to try and get my hands on, which spawns in an Ultra Jungle. Now, this Pokemon is a paradox form of the legendary Pokemon Lunala. Now, it's an Ultra Rare spawn and it only spawns obviously in an ultra jungle problem is actually finding one of those is going to be a little bit of a challenge so i'm going to keep on defeating raid dens keep on finding ultra beast ball loots and hopefully we'll be able to find an ultra jungle where we can try and catch this legendary lunala okay so whilst i've been searching around looking for more stuff in the ultra space i've had a message from karat and he's told me that he's hidden two gift chests around my base and he wants me to msg him for hints if i struggle at all so we're going to take a little break from trying to find stuff. And we're going to look for those gift chests. As an update on the Arceus plates, we've managed to find a bunch of Arceus plates. So let's just chuck them all in here. And I, I want to say we're quite close to having all of them now, right? We're missing two, right? I think we're missing the Pixie plate and Pixie and Splash. That's all we're missing. Okay, so I've got to find two chests that are hidden around the base. Oh, that's not even one. No. Cobblestone. Okay. Sub to YT Wilson or Karat 1000 is going to eat you. <laughs> Yo, there is the first one. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, so there's nothing that side. Let's head around this way. See if we can find anything. Hmm. I'm really not too sure. I can't lie. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, oh, wait. Hey, there we go. We have found the last present. There we go. Thank you very much, Karat. You are a legend. I really appreciate it, man. Okay, we are back. It is time, and it's to find ourselves a Paradox Form Legendary Pokemon. But the only two that we can really get are the Deoxys or the Lunala. Now, Deoxys is a really difficult one to get, so I wasn't going to go for that one. I figured it'd be a lot easier just to go for the Lunala, Problem is, we have to actually find the right biome first, which is taking forever. Yo, we finally found it. Let's go. Okay, so we found the correct biome that we need to be in, which of course is the Ultra Jungle. Now, all we need to do is actually try and find the Pokemon that we are looking for. Now, I don't know how hard it's going to be to find, but we're going to spend a little bit more time here and hopefully we can find it. All right, I'm going to be real with you guys. It's taking forever to find this guy. And I kid you not, I got so bored of trying to find this Lunala that I ended up filling up the entirety of my Moltres orb, which is absolutely crazy. Okay, I've spent a little bit more time just chilling here and AFKing, and I'm still not seeing a single thing. So I guess I'm going to head out of here for now because, like, there's a raid there. We've got a Mankey. We've got a Purloin. Like, I don't see anything in here, man. This is just crazy. Wait, what? Wait, when? When did you spawn? What? I'm so confused. Wait, what? When did you spawn? Huh? I mean, I'm taking it because this is insane, but we're going to throw the Ultra Ball. The Iron Eclipse is going to get into the Ultra Ball, and we're going to catch it first ball, just like that. Boom! We catch the Iron Eclipse. Look at this. Oh, ho, ho. Now, that is cool. Oh, my gosh. Now, let's heal up our Iron Eclipse. And then we're going to head over to the Shrines, and we're going to summon in our Moltres. Because with this, we now have pretty much all of our challenges ticked off for this 100 days. We have, of course, a full team of legendary Pokemon. 
We have a shiny legendary Pokemon. We have ourselves also a fusion Pokemon in Lucatrez. We have our Paradox Pokemon in Iron Eclipse. And now we're about to go ahead and get a Moltres as well, which means we have a bunch of legendary Pokemon. What we've got to do now is get him to level 100 and then take on the legendary trainer. Alrighty, here we go. Let's go ahead and summon in Moltres. Woohoo! Let's go, baby! I'll be real, I'm very scared that I'm going to murder this thing. Psybeam. No! <sighs> well, that's awkward, isn't it? Okay, well, with that absolute bombshell that's just gone off, let's go ahead and level up our Iron Eclipse. And finally, one more Grim Snarl. Boom, level 100. And just like that, we have ticked off another challenge for this 100 days, which of course was to get a full team of legendary Pokemon to level 100. And with that, we only have one more challenge to complete. Which, of course, is to take on the legendary Cyrid Trainer. All right, so we have completely finished our moveset for all of our Pokemon. You may be wondering why we have a rare and an epic lucky block. Now, this is because the server had a little bit of downtime between the two parts, which I just recorded just then. And I was lucky enough to get my hands on two of these lucky blocks that were sold on the GTS, which is huge, which means that now we can head back to the house... And we're going to open up these two final lucky blocks. And hopefully, we can get something good to then use in the fight against Siren. If not, we're going to go in with the team we've got now. But let's go ahead. We're going to head into the giant pyramid. Right into the middle where the rain is. We're going to place down our first lucky block. Okay. Three, two, one. Boom. No way. No way. What? <laughs> <laughs> we have two epic lucky blocks. No way. Um, okay. Well, we got two now. So let's go ahead. We're going to open up the first epic lucky block. Three, two, one. Boom. Ooh, okay. Okay. We get ourselves a shiny Cosmog. Okay. Let's go ahead and catch that. There we go. And now we have our last epic lucky block. Let's go ahead and open that bad boy up. Let's place it down. And three, two, one. Boom. A Regigigas. <laughs> ah. Okay. That is a bit of an L. Rip. Well, with that, I guess... <laughs> Let's go ahead and claim our Dex Rewards. There we go. Let's claim that. Okay, so nothing good there. Right, well, we got two epic lucky blocks. We got two more shiny legendary Pokemon. Of course, in shiny Regigigas and shiny Cosmog. Problem is, I don't think I'm going to use any of those. Uh, I'll be real. You know, Zapdos, shiny Regigigas, and shiny Cosmog. You, unfortunately, will not be joining us for this battle. Let's head over to the boss tower. Maybe we'll use them next time. But for now, let's head into the boss tower and defeat the Syro Trainer. Now, while we're heading up, make sure to let me know in the comments what your favorite legendary Pokemon that we've caught so far is. And also, make sure to let me know which legendary Pokemon you want to see me use in the next 100 days. Well, with that, let's head into the Syro Trainer fight. Here we go. Okay. We're going to go for the Dragon Dragonats first because it is a Spiritomb and normally they go for a Sucker Punch first if I am correct in saying so. So we're going to stay in here. We're going to go for the Dragon Dance and he goes for Foul Play. Of course he goes for Foul Play. We've been predicted. We've been we've been outplayed. I'll be honest, we've been outplayed. Um, We're going to go for Play Rough. We don't even take it down. That is crazy. Okay, we take it down there. Lucario comes out next. Play Rough. We get taken out by a Bullet Punch. Okay. Oof. Okay, 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 okay. Um, let's go into our fairy type here. We've got the Psychic Aura. Hopefully, he won't be able to use any moves that are priority. Now, we're going to go for the Moon Blast. He goes for the Sword Stance. Okay. Interesting, interesting. There's one. He tried to go for the Bullet Punch. It didn't work. Okay, he does hit the close combat, though. That is fine. 
No! We get defeated by the Cyro Trainer. Luckily, we still have a little bit of time left, so we will be back to take him on once again on day 100. I think for the last couple of days that we've got now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time working on my team and trying to get them the best possible movesets in order to take down Cyro Trainer. Okay, so we're back on the server today. And it was, of course, Halloween. So happy Halloween to everyone who is seeing this. I hope you had a good Halloween. Obviously, it's over by the time this comes out, but it is currently Halloween for myself. Hence why I am wearing this hilarious looking mask. And we've obviously turned our skin into a bit of a pumpkin skin with an awesome looking cape that we created as well. Now, I wanted to have a little look around the base now that we're logged back on. And as you can see, the temple that Bite has been making has been progressed massively. It is absolutely huge now, and it looks pretty insane, I'll be honest. Um... We can go inside here now. There's a massive area. We've still got the dirt shack as well. It, honestly, this place just looks amazing. Since we have a couple more days left of this 100 days, I figured that we could do a little bit of plate hunting. Now, as you can see here, obviously, we have almost every single Arceus plate. I'm pretty sure I'm missing the pixie and the splash plate, which is correct. Yep. And there's also two new ones that have come in the new update, the Legend Plate and the Blank Plate. Now, I'm not sure what these two do, but I'm hoping that we don't need to find those as well to summon Arceus. So what we're going to do is head out, try and find the last two plates, summon up Arceus, then we can take on the Cyro Trainer and hopefully defeat him on day 100. So I wanted to quickly show you guys these little candy baskets, I think they are, the candy baskets. Now, you can claim all of these. There's a bunch of them around this area in Warp Halloween Hunt. So all you have to do is run around this custom map, looking around in all of the different houses, all of the different areas, trying to find yourself a bunch of these candy baskets. And the plan is, hopefully we can find ourselves a bunch of these candy baskets. I'm hoping for maybe some Arceus plates or some Lucky Blocks, maybe. I'm not too sure. But we're going to try our best to find them and see what we get. We finally completed the last Halloween basket and we got ourselves a Halloween crate along with some pretty good rewards as well, like a random ghost shiny, a random dark shiny, a bunch of lucky blocks, master ball, fusion shards, loads of actually really cool stuff. So I guess without further ado, let's head over to the crates and open up our Halloween crate. Here we go. So now we need to find the Halloween crate right here. Let's open it up. So as you can see in here, we have a bunch of legendary Halloween Pokemon. Hopefully we can get one. Let's go ahead and open up. Come on, please give me something good. Just a legendary. That's all we need. No! We got a Halloween Dreepy. Oh, no. Okay, let's go into the PC. Let's have a little look at this guy real quick. Ooh, okay, okay. We're going to open up our five lucky blocks. Hopefully, we can get something good. We're going to place them right here in the center. And we're going to hopefully get something good. Haunter. Number two. An upgrade. Let's go. Come on. Number three. A Vikavolt. Number four. A Magikarp. And finally, a Bruxish. Okay, come on. This uncommon lucky block has to upgrade, please. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Uncommon lucky block, boom. And we get an upgrade. Come on. Rare lucky block upgrade, which means we're getting a guaranteed legendary Pokemon. Come on. Let's open it up. In two, in one. Boom. And we get ourselves a legendary Kyogre. We don't even have that yet as well, which is huge. We're going to get ourselves a bunch of rare candies and XP candies. We're going to get this Kyogre leveled up to level 100. Next plan, I think, is going to be to head to Ultra Space to try and find the final two plates to summon in Arceus. Oh, and it looks like a world boss Urshifu has spawned. So let's go to the world, world boss. Let's get involved. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay, let's get involved with the Urshifu. Here we go. Okay, we're doing like no damage to him right now. What is going on? Uh, okay. Big damage, maybe? Okay, we're doing nothing to him. Why are we doing no damage? What is happening? You must use electric moves in order to break this boss's shield. Oh. I don't know if we have... Do we have any? I don't think we have any electric moves. Oh, no. What's with the lag? Come on. We've got to take this down. As you can see on the top right-hand side, we are on a damage calc right now. We've got to do the most damage before this thing gets defeated. Come on. 
Okay, come on, Zashian. You've got to pull it in clutch for us. Play rough. Boom, big damage. Come on. No, that Forzies guy's got 7,400. That's crazy. There we go. We defeated the raid boss. I don't know who got the most damage there. Let's check. Slash raid reward. And we got second place. Let's go. Okay, so we got ourselves a tentacruel. Uh, and we also got ourselves 25,000 Poké Dollars. Now, we also got a shadow tentacruel. So let's just check this guy out real quick. Here we go. He's just... No. No, no, no. Uh, that is horrendous. So we have finally found the final plates that we need for Arceus. It's taken us a hot minute. Okay, so... <laughs> We found one of the plates that we need, which, of course, is a splash plate. Still looking for the pixie plate. But I did just get a DM from someone in the chat called I74K Dragon. Subscribe to Wilson. So, of course, this is your quick reminder. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you haven't already. And with all of you guys subscribing and liking the video right now, hopefully it'll bring me the luck I need to find the pixie plate. No! I got a plate from here. And I was like, oh my god, it's pink. This is it. This is the pixie plate. But no, you have found one mind plate. Bruh. Well, we've spent a little bit of time in the ultra space. We've collected up almost every single Arceus plate. But unfortunately, I was unable to find the pixie plate. Meaning, I think what we're going to do is if, is if you guys want to see 200 days in legendary only Pixmon, subscribe to the channel and of course, like the video. And I will create 200 days in legendary only. And I guess what we can do for our first legend starting that 200 days is get the pixie plate and get ourselves a legendary Arceus a kickstart 200 days in legendary only. Okay, we've made our way into the boss tower. It's time to head up the elevator. There he is. The legendary Cyro trainer. This is it. Okay. Hopefully this time we can take him down. But I mean, let's just give it our best go and see what happens. Here we go. Okay. So it looks like we're starting out with a Spiritomb against our Tapu Lele. We're going to go for the Toxic. Perfect. That is one Pokemon taken down. We get hit by the bullet punch, but we do take it, which is huge. Oh, it didn't work. I'm assuming that might be because of psychic terrain, which means no priority moves, which is amazing. Close combat, and we get taken down. All right, so let's go into our Rayquaza. Let's go for Dragon's Ascent. Okay, we take the hit, whatever he used. We can't see what he did. Okay, cool. And we take the close combat. Let's go. Okay, my low tick comes out next. We're going to go for the E speed just to get some damage off because I think we will go down here. Yep, we do go down to the skull. That is fine. Okay, next up, we're going to go into our Kyogre, and we're going to go for the Thunderbolt. Hopefully, we can do some big damage here. Ooh, okay. He took that really well. That is not good. Okay, we're going to go for the Calm Mind. Let's go for another Thunderbolt. Okay, that's good damage. Calm Mind again. He's just spamming the Recover. This is great for us. Oh, stat oh he has Haze. Bruh. Oh, okay. I think he might have run out of Recovers. And we take down the Milotic. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Let's go into our Zashian here. And let's go for the Steel move, I guess. Yeah, we're going to go for the Behemoth Blade. Boom, that is some big damage. Okay, taking it down. There we go. Close combat, maybe, will be the play here. I'm not too sure, actually. Um, You know what? We're going to keep going for the Behemoth Blade. Ah, we get taken down. Okay, let's go into our Lucartres. There we go. And we're going to go for... We're going for the Power Up Punch. Hopefully, we can get some attack increases. And he hits an Ice Beam. No. Okay, our final Pokemon. What are we going to be able to do? Let's go for the Moon Geist Beam. We do no damage. Oh, no. And it's got Recover, man. No. Maybe a bit of Prismatic Onslaught. Mm, doesn't do a lot. Okay, we've got Moonlight. We can heal ourselves a little bit. And we've taken the L. No, man. What? Ah. This Cyro Trader is so difficult. Well unfortunately we do get taken down by mr siren right here hopefully in the next one we're gonna be able to take him out but i guess that's gonna be one of the goals for 200 days to try and defeat the siren trainer because unfortunately we've hit day 100 and we've taken the l against mr siren hopefully next time we're gonna be able to take him down and become the ultimate legendary trainer